pulling like this. Yeah, you are simple. going downhill. I'm pulling up. We're going to keep a healthy delta because I just saw the C4. You could. <laughs> <laughs> you all going down, huh? Yeah, we're all going downhill. Do you want me to zoom out sometime? <laughs> we're, all we're all going downhill <laughs> here. We're all going down. <laughs> Perk's going down. We're all going downhill right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll, it's like it's at 20 delta, but the altitude looks like it's 15. And yeah. with the shoot the heave of the ship. Okay, sure thing. Do you want me to I'm see actually, if I can go wider on the sled? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So I can keep it in the well, picture. Gives uh. you a little bit more, that's all Ooh, I can do. Look at that view. Oh, I'm nauseous. Can I you come full wide? Yeah, that's as far as it goes. Are we? Yep. The, uh, the only further is just the edge of the camera. Garage. Man, okay, sorry, I just got blown off again. Are you sure? <laughs> go for it. It's not coming, I don't see the edge of the sled or camera. Do you want to stop the ship move there for a minute there, please? Okay. Thanks. Sorry, Preach. guys. This is Nav. Hold position here, please. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not able to make any good way okay. again. So just stand by with us for a moment. Um, the pilots are uh, getting Hercules uh, and Adelina reconfigured here. So we might be seeing some blue for a minute or two. I think you're pulling on me. Yeah. Watch. I was trying to make any good headway. Yeah, this, these currents around here are crazy. It's very interesting. Was it a sudden change? Yeah, it just picked up. I don't okay. know why. Interesting. I mean, it was blowing before, but now. Yeah. Just trying to make it some aft way here. It was under control. Now it gets you even more. Yeah. Stand by. Roger. No worries. We have a question about whether corals can get parasites the way uh, other things get lice or mites or whatever. Do we know of any parasites on corals? That's a good question. I don't really know. I don't, I don't hear about that much in the, the deep world, at least. I'm but I feel like there are all kinds of, like, you know, even just microscopic things that you could sort of consider a parasite. Yeah, and there might be, like, even fungal pathogens. Yeah, definitely pathogens, too. like microbes of all kinds, like bacteria and fungi, yeah. But if they're present, that's something that uh, eDNA has a chance of picking up, right? Maybe, but it'd be very difficult to tell that that had been instead of rather than a free living, uh, a free living bacteria or or fungus that that had been associated with a specific organism. For that, it would be better to take a branch of a coral or a piece of a sponge. Makes sense. So kind of more. Like uh, yeah, what so uh, Dr. Orcutt's sampling strategy is. Um, yeah. Oh, like if you for for a living organism, you'd want to take, or like if you were asking a question about a, a pathogen associated with a specific organism, you'd want to take a piece of that organism. Right. That makes a lot of which, sense. Which, right? I guess like Beth is asking questions about about mineral crust, so she needs to take that actual crust to know what's living in association with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we can pick up all sorts of stuff with eDNA, but um, that's just ambient. Um, yeah. So it lacks that specific context of, you know, um, what the relationships between the different species we'd identify are. Right, exactly. Ah, Asako says there are parasites on corals. Um, do you know what kind off the top of your head? I know in the hard corals I work on, um, Lophelia, deep sea, um, reef forming coral, um, there are often these unicid worms that burrow into the skeleton and they're really big, kind of scary worms and you'll just be like working on a sample and they'll like jump out at you. It's mm. Oh God, it's that sounds like alien. It's not the best. <laughs> <laughs> I saw something go by that looked suspiciously like the porch coral. Oh no. Or a piece of it, but I'm not sure. Bye. Yeah.
We didn't need it. <laughs> we didn't need you anyway. We have a question for Kylie. Does Atalanta drive different to Argus? It's lighter, um, which um, means it doesn't quite absorb the um, heave of the ship as well as Argus, in my barf cam opinion. Um, <laughs> but it still does the job because it does dampen it to her. So I'm coming down. Mm, I'm coming down as far as I can, but I don't think I'll get to 15. But otherwise, um, things are very, very similar. I just am lacking some utility cameras, but I don't need them on this vehicle. So. I have you in my down cam. I have a shout out to Kylie from Brandy, who was a SCF in our last one. Brandy! Hmm. <laughs> I love Brandy. I love all SCFs, Chris. I love all of you. <laughs> I got you. Brandy was so cool, too. Like, ugh, we had a great time. I'm still here. I'm still here, girl. We're still kicking. All right. All right. We are back under Atalanta. That was a fun. I mean, Corallium. Oh my gosh. That Something that's not a dead bamboo <laughs> coral. It's like some. A few like staropathies down yeah. there, too. Yeah. So, what gives bamboo coral their name? The. The skeleton, actually, mm -hmm. if you look at it, has a, a bam banding pattern that looks uh, yeah. a lot like bamboo. Wait, cool. I'm at 16. Oh, yeah, sorry. Seeing some broken pillows and structures. So you're coming up, so yes, I, I got you. I got you. Coming up, too. Yeah, a few broken pillow flows here and there on this very steep face and a few lava flows. So this is a busy place volcanically for a while. A detour for a few minutes there. <laughs> uh, no problem. I'm Sorry just glad things that. are straightened out. Keeping it spicy. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, that's what uh, 12 to 4 is here for. <laughs> Alright, ready for is you guys. Is this a scientific so paper? I think so. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Um, we'll make it the same. 320. 320, Raj. I think it's a preview issue. Let's hope it's thick. <laughs> Bridge, this is Nav. Another move bearing 320.50 meters. Affirmative. 320. Kylie, just yeah, for. Operational sense. Yes. I'm going to stay a bit up uphill of you. Okay. So you don't have to run into the hillside. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love that for us. <laughs> yeah, wow. Interesting. I wish we could watch this, but the, the Wi Fi is going to complain. Oh, it's like it's some cool. over there, maybe? Those of you just joining us, we are in the middle of a 16-hour dive on unnamed Seamount East in the Liliokalani Ridge, I just outside the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, northwest of Hawaii. I think it's a 14-hour dive now. Oh, is it a 14-hour dive? Yeah, right? we changed yes. it with our delayed. Got it. 
gotcha. but you know, close we're, enough. We're still in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you're right, exactly. <laughs> Six more hours. So there, Brett, you can see on the bottom of that center bamboo, the mm -hmm. like black lines that really look like a bamboo. I do see that. Yeah. Very cool. Um, going to start a gauge check. Roger. All right, here's a good test to see what the flow is doing. So I'm off my sticks right now. Oh, Ooh, wow. Really wow. Cool. Speedy. Really pushing, yeah. Yeah, but at least now we're going straight into the flow, so I might make slow headway, but yeah, that's pretty that's pretty fast. Pretty gnarly current there. Very strong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back to the question about coral parasites. Um, one of our uh, onshore team, Asako, says that for octric corals, uh, crustacea such as uh, copepods can become parasites. Uh, they mm -hmm. live on the surface of the coral, and they formed galls. Do you know what galls are? Yeah, uh, like like large, uh, like bulbous protrusion sort of type of things. Okay. Mm Yeah, it's kind of crazy is that you don't see, you see like the tops of these corals bending, but the bottom of them is, must be relatively yeah. rigid, yeah. right? Yeah. Does that thicken as the corals age? It looks that way, yeah, but it's weird. There's not a ton of tapering where you would think it would be much less structurally sound at the top, but yeah, definitely it is bent more bendy at the top. Is that a whip coral that we're seeing near the top? Yeah. It is, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just Different a type of bamboo. Mm -hmm. Val, did you just identify a piece of biology? Yeah. <laughs> I do that every now and again. I she am She doesn't impressed. give herself credit. She's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> Color me impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did find something exciting in uh, one of the rocks from uh, one of our earlier dives today. Back to rocks. <laughs> Horse. <laughs> <laughs> Quartz, he said? No, no quartz. Um, I, I was saying, of course. Oh. <laughs> 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 of course. Of course. Very tempting. I will check one. Thank you. So, yeah, I cut one, uh, I cut a rock open and uh, discovered a uh, part of it looked kind of strange and a little bit out of place and took a closer look, and it um, appears to be yeah. a uh, <laughs> mantle xenolith. Do you want me to open for you? Yeah. yeah. A little guess. chunk of their mantle came up in some of these lavas. It happens That's now and crazy. again. Do you have a sensor yeah. which measure the uh, the current with the herc? Okay. Maybe someday the ship will get an ADCP uh, acoustic Doppler current profiler so we could profile the currents using the Doppler effect and acoustics. <laughs> Sounds not complicated. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool to see those profiles because it's like through the water column, all the different vectors of the current through the whole thing as it changes. We are Top to um, bottom. getting an ADCP or uh, getting an EK80, I believe. Does it come with an ADCP? Yeah. Raj! Big Raj! <laughs> <laughs> Celebratory Raj! When? Next year? I think that was the idea when we go into dry dock, maybe. That would be just a great data point, you know. Great great reference for us for our ops. Yeah, and sounds like it. Yeah. And then it's good data for science to have, too. It's like an extra data set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In this bamboo coral over here, we can see some yellow hydroids, what it looks oh, yeah. like. Oh, sure enough. Some of the skeleton. 
Okay, Val, tell us more about your mantle xenolith because I know that you're <laughs> really excited about it and it does sound really cool. And you've been you've been talking about these things since before you cracked open that rock and found one. So let's hear it. <laughs> Um, so yes, uh, we're, these these volcanoes Go are. Push on um, there, please, right? Uh, for uh, they're they're basically made out of melt uh, that comes from uh, actual mantle material that is then uh, moved up into a crustal uh, volcanic plumbing system, basically, and erupted some of it anyway. And um, occasionally, uh, at some point in the transport of that melt, um, couldn't tell you exactly where. Uh, sometimes you get little bits of uh, mantle or lower crust that um, will break off and uh, be carried into the magmatic system along with the melt and erupted out. And anything like that, like you know, lower crust, uh, lithospheric mantle, um, that's you know that's uh, considered a xenolith or um, you know some sort of rock that originally was not part of the lava that it's been um, entrained into. So it's not in like chemical equilibrium or anything with the surrounding melt. So it gets kind of these weird shapes and it's a little altered and it looks kind of weird. So they're, they're pretty easy to spot once you cut them open. But um, it's, it's kind of exciting and I geek out about this stuff because uh, this is one of, the, one of the few handfuls of opportunities that we get to actually see directly a little bit of the mantle, which we've, we've tried to drill down to the mantle a couple of times and haven't succeeded yet. Yes. So, um, or lose the ones. For those who don't know much about the layering or the upper crust, lower lithosphere mantle, why can you tell them more about like why it's impressive that it would come from the mantle? How did it even get into the magmatic plumbing system? <laughs> but where is the mantle relative to what what folks up here know? Mm. Far away, close. It's, it's it's down there, um, below the oceanic crust, somewhere in the order of around 10 Shall we keep down. moving? Uh, keep I think moving. so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Same step. Bridge, this is nav. Another move 50 meters bearing 320. Thank you. Yeah, it's like when it comes to the mantle, we're like, you know, tens of kilometers away from it. But it's easier to get to space by a long shot yeah. than it is the interior of the Earth. Wow. And uh, there's, there's a lot that we could learn if we could um, sample it more directly in different places, but um, we just don't have the technology to drill down that deep yeah you know we, we have like tungsten drills uh, drill bits and stuff but um at some point you hit this uh geotherm oh, and things start you. heating up and oh we have an interesting biology thing i'll see you guys want to zoom on this guy yeah can we take a look at this sure sea thing. cucumber yeah sure thing sorry val no you're fine I mean, I can always keep talking about the mantle any time. This is uh, this is a little more. T uh, <laughs> Should I hold position? Got a critter to look at. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll yeah, this is a little on. more time dependent. How about there I am? All right, go ahead and push a little bit more. Oh yeah. Not as translucent as I like them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the ones where you can kind of see their insides and All stuff? All the inner workings. Yeah. Those are fascinating. Right. It's like those, it's like away, a, please. this is stupid. It's like a clear elevator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> it's fascinating. Like you can't look away. <laughs> a clear dirt elevator. <laughs> Se a sediment <laughs> elevator. Yes. Yes. Said elevator. So I was trying. <laughs> <laughs> my, my mouth doesn't make that shape. <laughs> Said an elevator. 
Hey, right what's here. in the uh, in the Atlantic cam? You see it floating up towards me? Is that octopus? Oh. Tell me that's octopus. Wait, what? Please, no, Jesus. I saw I saw what you saw. It looked I almost it squiddy. Back. Where are you? He's gone. No, he's not. <laughs> he's just behind you. Where are you? I really want an excuse to use the octopus on the telestrator. Oh. No, I swear <laughs> it looked like the body of an octopus. I saw what you saw. I saw. I believed. You don't need an excuse, right? I did not see I it, hope but to I God it comes you. flying, hugging the HD cam. And I'm like, see, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to mess with stuff. Go for it. Uh. Hey, Ryan, are you Psy left or Psy right? Do you know? I Psy am Psy left. left. Okay. So I keep trying to boost you, but I don't know if I did it enough. I can also just move the mic closer. That I, might help. I hear you well. Okay. Yeah, please don't make me louder. <laughs> uh, I think I'm making you quieter right now. I have to check. <laughs> That's he, probably the right he decision. He said, we're toning you down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm you not saw what I saw. That one. <laughs> I, yeah. I feel like I, don't I saw know why a UFO. I can't say anything other than like, I saw, <laughs> I saw, <laughs> I saw what you saw. <laughs> I wish I had caught it faster or something. It was just a glimpse. It's not you, it was me. I should have screamed grabbed. <laughs> Where is it? Where did it go? It's still there somewhere. No, we can't see it anymore, so it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, she had better lights that on this thing. It makes you wonder how much other stuff is just swimming barely out of our view. I know. All the time. All the time. Yeah, I it swear is. it was an octopus. I'm just, FYI, we saw an octopus on our watch. Got it? Vampire That's the squid. story. We're Vampire sticking squid. to it. Vampire We're squid. Telling We'd be cooler. We're telling the rest of the watches. We saw the coolest thing in the Atlantic camp. Yeah, don't look back at the footage because, like, you <laughs> <It's>, know. <laughs> it was really quick, but it, it was, was the coolest really thing. Fast, but we all saw it. <laughs> Gosh darn. Got a shout out in our chat to Asaka Matsumoto, who's one of our scientists on shore, helping us out this evening with some science info. Hey Val. Hey what? Is there <laughs> any emerging technology that could drill down closer to the mantle than we've gotten before? That is a very good question that I don't really know the answer to. So we, we have some Drill bits, um, this is going to be super elementary because I'm not super well informed on the tech side, but we, you know, we can use like tungsten drill bits and stuff, which are incredibly tough. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem with drilling tends to be that the deeper you go into the crust, uh, the more temperatures in the borehole go up. Mm -hmm. And when you heat things up, um, drill bits and equipment and stuff start to fail and it gets really hard to uh, keep going at some point. Mm. Like diminishing returns almost like to take costs more to get deeper and the deeper you go the more difficult it is to keep going sort of a deal? Um, I imagine that's a big part of it. Um, I, I think also it's just we just it just doesn't play nice with the drill bits. I think if I remember yeah. correctly, it's they just don't last that long once you get it to a high enough temperature. So here's my uh, question. Do we, I mean, for the sake of science, I'm sure the answer is yes. But do we want to pop a hole in our Earth balloon? <laughs> 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 well, if, if we were to reach the mantle, um, it it. We would, would all start spewing out in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the planet would explode. We want yeah. our mantle on the inside, don't we? <laughs> we don't want it on the outside. <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes the mantle still ends up on the outside, but um, it, the mantle's uh, a convecting solid, so okay. um, we don't have to worry about like like mantle leaking out or anything. So it's a com com convecting yeah, solid. It's a solid that moves. <laughs> it's so it's like a plate, plastic, but it's deeper. Like the way the tectonic plates move, but it's deeper. Sort of. Does it move because the? C why does it move? Um, it, it's it's a how does heat, it move? Heat driven and yeah. potentially mechanically driven in uh, in part by uh, uh, plate tectonics. Are the plates deeper than the mantle? No. Nope. The plates sit Are on, on top. top. Yep. 
So they're attached? Yes. And because sort the plates of. are moving, the mantle moves? Um, there is some decoupling between the directions that we can detect that the mantle is moving mm -hmm. and the way that the plates move. Um, that's a good geophysicist question. But um, there's, there, there's like a decouple point that happens um, in what we call the lithosphere system, which in includes the crust and um, a small portion of the upper mantle uh, that we call the lithospheric mantle. Uh -huh. uh, and then below that, there's a, uh, like a more sort of plastic deformable region uh, called uh, the asthenosphere. And um, that's, yeah, it's just this uh, structurally weak part that uh, uh, the lithosphere sits on top of. And it's from pretty sure that decoupling takes place. Okay. The original idea, though, was sort of that there was mantle convection that, that pushed the plates. the plates around. But as Val explained in her talk um, at the beginning of the cruise, there's like also a sort of newer theory about like the push and pull that uh, like generated by the plates themselves, the ocean plates or, or subducting plates sinking that like also could be moving, moving the plates. Yeah, so we, we think it's, you know, the mantle convex partly because it's it's being, uh, there there is a heat source. So I'll move more towards north, 340, to get you in. Bridge, this is nav. Can we have a move 50 meters on bearing 340? Uh, Masako, do you want us to take a closer yes, look please. at either of those? So yeah, it, the way the mantle moves could be driven a couple of different could ways. Could do a partial zoom here, please. You get the. Uh, That's great there. You get the the kind of heating from below from the core, mm -hmm. and potentially mechanical top down driven uh, convection uh, uh, from uh, uh, the plates. That it's it's not entirely clear how either of those like contribute or how much I'm and it's, it's always a, ma a matter of debate until we know more sort of deal right yeah it's right. pretty much sort of a per perpetual state of things how do you monitor mantle movement mm. can you say that again please how do you monitor mantle movement um or detect it you know it, it has to do with um how seismic waves move through the mantle that is cool. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. So it's like um, it's something called um, anisotropy. Um, basically, uh, the velocity of like seismic waves um, is different depending on the direction that they're moving in. And yeah, we could like uh, uh, there's some directions in the mantle where sound moves faster. Yeah. Um, and other directions where it's a little bit slower. And seismic waves are how we even figured out early on that there were layers to the Earth, mm -hmm. because some waves can travel through some of those layers through liquid but not solid, and um, or through solid but not liquid, right? Right. And and so seeing that like at some angles the si seismic wave would get all the way through, but then if it were you know more directly across from where that seismic wave was generated on the other side of the Earth, you it wouldn't reach there. Like doing that math helped us to figure out where the layers of the Earth were. Exactly. Oh my God. And that also helped us uh, determine that um, the outer core is uh, liquid. So you have this. Uh, you have the crust, and the, uh, the lithospheric system. You have uh, the mantle and a couple of layers in that, which is a convecting solid. And then you get down toward uh, the core, the, and the mantle is sitting atop. Um, a liquid metal outer core, and then within that is a uh, smaller solid inner core. And there's currently a debate whether there's an inner inner core too. What? Like all sorts of science about uh, that that's uh, started okay. to show that like the inner core um, is actually not quite spherical. Like it's got an eastern and a western hemisphere uh. that are different. And there's all sorts of wild stuff that the seismologists are uh, are learning and. Yeah, it's just mind-blowingly cool. What does that mean for magnetism? 
like for Earth's magnetism, given that that sort of is like, isn't that related to the way that the the magnetic dipole is generated, like the rotation yeah. of the inner core? Um, yeah, I think rotation of the inner core, um, a lot of it has to do with um, dynamics in the outer core too. Okay. Somebody's somebody's gonna come on and correct me on all of this. <laughs> so all of this is included in geology? Yeah. See, Sheldon's wrong. You, this is a this is a science. This is a for sci sure a this, science. This is complex. And then the like when you get into magneto stratigraphy stuff, like that's how we started to also uh, understand seafloor spreading was mm -hmm. because that dipole would switch back and forth, but so the the direction of Earth's magnetism. But when new rock, you know, spews out from a spreading center and then hardens, it preserves a record of the direction that the Earth's dipole was in at that time. And so you can see <gasps> that as it gets further and further away from the spreading center, on either side of the center, it's like stripes. It's like, okay, positive and then negative and then positive and then negative. Mm -hmm. Or not not negative, but you know, more like the direction was different and flipped. And that can that helped us realize that seafloor spreading, spreading was a thing. Yeah, and we can even use that to um, get a decent age constraint uh not an exact age like you can with the uh, radiogenic uh dating methods but you can get a pretty decent age constraint on uh seafloor by looking at that uh pattern of magnetic stripes i'm overwhelmed <laughs> <laughs> i'm really overwhelmed <laughs> like in a good way but like i'm freaked out <laughs> like i'm impressed and i'm confused and i like it and I am a fully saturated sponge. <laughs> <laughs> we can look at pictures tomorrow. We'll give visuals I'm to all of us. Really, this. just bewildered. <laughs> Speaking of saturated sponge, I think I'm gonna sign okay. off for the night. Thank yeah. you for having me. It's well <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Yes, go desaturate and get some rest. <laughs> Ryan's been Thanks with us for a long time, so Thanks, um, Ryan. Go get some sleep. That is so cool. I'm gonna dream about core crusts and pull that ready tonight. Do you have the <laughs> chat open, Kylie? Yeah. I'm going to start sending you pictures to illustrate these things. Yes, Do it. please. Oh. Yes. I am just, I just, there was just so many things in that, that like, gosh. The geology I, has a lot going on. Like we, we kind of draw from. partial zoom, please. Oh, yeah, we draw from so many Let's get there. other like disciplines. So like there's chemistry, there's physics. Um, know engineering um i don't know sometimes i moonlight as a plumber <laughs> me too <laughs> we have that in common <laughs> yep. it's like working with rocks right. too cool sometimes way, it takes literally all five senses yeah but stuff that comes off the seafloor i do not lick because <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> either there's bacteria gotta draw the line somewhere <laughs> it's like there's too many metals in the manganese crust and i don't really want to have those in my system so yeah we, we don't we don't like ocean rocks but <laughs> sometimes we do with others to help id them my favorite bad geology movie is the core it's amazing is it it's 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 amazing it's so awful but not if i want to learn something don't expect to learn much. Oh, from it. it's, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> No, it's 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 got this like all star cast in it, and at some point, it just seems like they just straight gave up on the science, and um, <laughs> they have and like <laughs> it's this it, they basically have to try to restart the core <laughs> so they oh. can get the Earth's magnetic field back. It's amazing. You know what I like watching sometimes is um like um. They're like videos of an actual scientist of or expert in the field um, critiquing or debunking or or congratulating uh, like movies that depict that area of interest mm. um, and like help you identify like what things are accurate, what things are impossible, um, and where our technology is in relation to like what the movie's trying to portray. Um, those are usually pretty cool you know i wonder if there's there's been like a i don't know geologist or, or something uh that has like you know reviewed the core in a scientific way i don't know well Maybe. journey to the center of the earth is not it <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, 
pictures. Okay, yeah, I got you one, and here I'm about to send one that shows sort of like the seismic wave layer situation of the Earth in a very simple way. If we had unobtainium, we could definitely drill down to the mantle. I'm sorry. Unob if we had it's unobtainable. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Is that a real thing you just said, Keep though? No, it's not real. Oh, Roger. Okay. <laughs> Roger. 340. 340, Roger. 340. Bridge, this is now. I'm there Another already. save move. 50 meters on bearing 340. Thank you. I took a picture. I'm going to have to read it later, the the, con the words in here. They're too small. They uh, the, the words are not important other oh. than... Oh, like I mean, I think they are for context. The warm, <laughs> the warm tones <laughs> are like one polarity of the like you know magnetic direction yeah and then the cool tones are another direction and you can see that like it switches back and forth on either side yeah. Ooh, it can and be the normal and reverse polarity if you age date those layers like you know the orange stripe let's say and then you you can you can kind of like do some cross-referencing with dates from other areas, and that that also oh like my God. helps to determine the age of seafloor in different areas. I like that. Can I, I like be it like, too. can I moonlight as a geologist? Absolutely. I passed my geology test yesterday. You did. I did so good, Leela. Because <laughs> there was you had a geology test. Oh, yes, there was those extra <laughs> rocks in the bio box, <laughs> and I took one of them and I said, "Hey Val, is this?" Manganese crust? Yeah. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, is this the alteration? Oh, and she yeah. was like, yeah. And I was like, what is, <laughs> what's this other thing? And she was like, biology. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, go ask somebody else. <laughs> it's a thing. It was pointy. It was alive at some point. Totally. <laughs> was a sharp I light. don't know, full wide, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need that throwback, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if I don't know something, I'm going to own up to it. No, I just yeah, don't know. Totally. Good. Yeah. I asked Justin, too, and he said it, not Justin, Ryan. I asked Ryan, and he said it might have been a, um, a foraminifera. Okay. Arborescent It's forum. very, very small. It was very, very sharp. Sharp? Yeah, it's sharp. She's sharp. I feel like our russet forearms aren't usually super sharp. I have um, the rock still, and oh. I can present it for identification. Okay. Because I'm going to bring it home. Barnacle. <laughs> it's very small. Barnacle. Rot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but barnacle is kind of a funny word. Barnacle. Identified. <laughs> All right, we are right in the saddle point between waypoints four and five. There's all sorts of large, tall corals around here. What kind They're of really corals tall. are they? Uh, That's a bamboo on the left. Yeah. They're mostly bamboo. Yeah. And the one that's like the the fanny one with all like the veiny, like looks like a leaf of sure. lettuce or something? Yeah. What's that? It's well, not a Chrysiogorgia, is it? No. No, although we did just pass one of those. There, there's actually a Chrysogorgia in this frame right now. Oh, I see it. Yeah, do you see it, Kylie? Is it oh, there, the one on the another, left? There are two. Yes. Uh -huh. the what's that guy? So this That's looks like a hemichorallium in the middle. Uh, 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 Hem hemichorallium, it's one of the precious corals. Hemichorallium, and why is it precious? Because that, it's actually like its skeleton is that pinky color. Yeah. It's not the tissue. And so it's been, it's been collected and sold um, as like you know for jewelry because it oh, has that beautiful like pink that. color. I don't Actually, like that. I think I'm wrong about this one though because the base looks white, which is surprising. I can take a look. Was it supposed to be the same color generally as the the rest of the coral? Well, the actual if it were a precious coral, the actual skeleton should be pink. Hemichorallium. Okay. Can they be different can colors? Push it in there, please. Like, can the, can, does that make sense? Can like, like they can be like pinky, reddy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so well, if it was I like yellow, it confusing. would be a different thing altogether, even if it had a similar lung-like branching system there. If it was what? Like you see how like the, go ahead and push on in a bit more. It please. seems like I, there are many of those smaller branches and then 
and then like the polyps on top of them, it makes it look like a lung to me. Hmm. Um, if uh, is that unique to this kind of coral, or are there many kinds of corals uh, of different colors that look similar to this? That would be a totally different thing. Pull away, please. I love that shot. Like, I want to know, if I see the thing that looks like a lung to me, is it a hemichorallium? Thing that looks like a lung to you? Does that look like a lung to you? Yeah. With all the like Upside down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like instead yes. of it being like a like a singular, like a stalk that has the many polyps on the individual s stalk, you know? Well, I don't not like that structure of there being like, you know, it, it starts big like in a big and then divides into lots of different sections. Yeah. That's a lot of different corals, so they're not necessarily all hemichorallium. Oh, rog, 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 rog. But put it in the under in the category of needs to learn more. You get a feel for it though. You you're like, okay, I can I don't know what exactly it is, but this one has like it's a less chunky in certain ways or the polyps are a slightly different shape or it moves in a different way and you start to like be able to recognize it better. What is the, on that rock? The hey, are those uh, oh, hydrates again? Those no, not oh. that. Let's get there. Okay. The It was on the right. It wasn't this? Kind of orange. No, further on the right it was orange. I think it might have been a, a, an anemone sucked up. Sea star. Yeah. You want to come partial wide, please? Do you see it? We see oh, those sea that. stars on coral. Are they a predator or a parasite? They would be a predator. A parasite, I feel like I associate that with there's like they they Thank you. stay on that particular host more. They need that host more for their life cycle. Yeah, it's just an anemone. You guys still want to zoom on it? Or oh. no? I'm good. I think we're good. Roger that. Come on. We had a comment in our chat that, that the temperature of the mantle varies from about 1,000 Celsius uh, to 3,700 Celsius near its boundary with the core. Yep. In the mantle, heat and pressure generally, cause, uh, generally increase with depth. Hence, drilling would have to overcome heat and pressure counter forces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's... It, quite the technological challenge that we haven't quite pulled off yet. And that heat is from, and correct me if I'm wrong, Val, but I'm trying to remember, I think it's from, from actually the formation of the Earth, but is maintained by radioactive decay of different, uh, yep, radioactive compounds inside the Earth. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, accretion of uh, planetary bodies tends to heat them up. Um, get pretty on an Earth-sized planet. Uh, that means we think we've had um, a uh, phenomenon in very early Earth called uh, magma oceans. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, still a lot of conversation about what those looked like, whether or not, um, you know, there was a surficial magma ocean or episodes of that, um, how deep they may have been, whether or not there was a, uh, a magma ocean at the uh, core mantle boundary. Whoa. Um, and yeah, uh, decay of um, radionuclides, like uh, radioactive isotopes of uranium, thorium, and uh, potassium uh, have helped uh, prolong uh, that, that heat inside the Earth that helps drive plate tectonics. So uh, other planets Sulman. in our solar system... Oh, okay, go good. ahead, Solomon. Bridge, this is Nav. Uh, another move, same step. Val, before you continue, I am going to request that you call magma ocean, mag motion. Mag motion? For going forward, the yes, mag please. Motion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> I think it'll bring me a lot of joy. So. Technical term. Of course. Back in the day, the floor actually was lava. <laughs> At least for a little while. <laughs> there have been so many crazy phases that Earth has gone through, like Snowball Earth, mm. 
periods where it was entirely <laughs> covered in snow and ice. You should, okay, there are a couple videos that are like 45 minute videos of the entire history of Earth, mm -hmm. starting from, you know, 4.3 billion years ago, is that when the Earth formed, something like that? Uh, Val, <laughs> 4.3 billion years um, ago? 4.5, 4.7 something. So, okay, you know, Split those dozens that point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's fascinating how many different phases Earth has gone through. Yeah. Completely unrecognizable. Yeah, we're just coming in kind of okay. in the last so like like blips. Okay. Backing up to that precious coral conversation we were having. So I was confused by the fact that the base of that precious coral seemed to be white when they should be red or pink. Um, but Asako <laughs> reminds me that so it's like the outer sclerites only that have that color. But if you actually are just looking at the at the calcite, at the, the calcium carbonate on the inside, that is still white. So yeah. it seems like even that those outside pink layers of the skeleton itself were gone. Gotcha. We had a question from Jess a little while ago. When you train for your jobs, do any of you have to learn to scuba dive? Um, that was directed to me. No, or it's a person from from no, a person from, from a person. that shares your name. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can okay. answer it though. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I didn't understand that very well. Well, I can start off as answer. That's an I do not. But anyone else here in the <laughs> band? Um, <laughs> I've yeah. never dived. I Don't. started out doing shallow water work first, so I did coral reef ecology, and so I learned to scuba dive for that, and um, and now I've recently helped out with some coral reef ecology stuff while in grad school in French Polynesia, and I got to do a bunch of diving there, which was awesome for scientific diving. So I had to get, um, there are recreational dive certifications, but then there's also a scientific diving certification through the AAUS, um, American Association of Underwater something something. Science. Scuba <laughs> science. Yeah, right. I should probably know that. Um, and... So I study methane seep ecology, and recently, um, th so the first time that we've ever known when a methane seep started and been able to follow it uh, in the progression of its uh, community is recently in 2012, a methane seep started up at a pretty well-known site in Antarctica, and it's shallower. Where was that so fish? Oh, where? Sorry to interrupt. Oh, up on good. the left. Oh, yeah. Um, is it another one of the same ones as before? Yeah, that's where it is. Yeah. It's yeah, pretty it big. The same. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Hello, Hello, buddy. You saw a shadow. I couldn't see him at all. I that just was a good spot. Caught him. Peter Pan. Yeah. Well, voids do blend in there very we well down here. Yeah. Shake. Oh, two of them. Two. Hello. Party. Hello. Hey. Welcome to the science party. <laughs> so these are called void fish? No, no, I have the name. Don't tell me. I, I don't I even remember it, so if you I remember, do. that'd be great. I wrote it down, I googled Can it. Can I do a partial zoom in here, actually? I'm calling yeah, sure. a void fish. It's a very informal name that I just made up. Moraday so. and to don't Mora. To me. Moraday and to Mora. We made the same move. Okay. <laughs> That's where common names come from, so. Moraday and to Mora. <laughs> it's like, you. do you want more a day? No, I want Aunt Auntie um, Mora. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I want more. as many Mora as Yes, it's I dark. There's no daytime. Mora day? Auntie Mora. That's really good. I'll know that now. Ooh, nodule field. It's <laughs> got those little barbs underneath its chin. Push in there a bit more, please. Sure thing. It's like a shy fish. I wonder if those are just for feeling mm. on the bottom or if they detect chemicals at all or anything. I like the scales. The yeah. thin, rather. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I can go a little further than this now if you want. Sure. Oh, cool. Wow. Is it interesting, like, the front end of the dorsal fin, how it is just like a long wire? Mm hmm It's like an antenna. Yeah. Yeah. All right, pull away, please. I'll leave our friend alone. 
Very cool. That is a lure or something. Need to see two of them at once. Yeah. 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 Last time we saw a few of them at once, too. It's Jess, I'm going to check to see if I can go a little higher. Oh, okay, sure thing. buddies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that a, is that bubble cam in the bottom left right now? Down here? Yeah. Yeah. Is it scratched? No. No, it has a drop in it. Oh, okay. It, or a, um, like, a little... Well, the cookie star it just attached itself to the outside. Ah, uh, yes. It's blurring no, out of it. It's the vampire squid. <laughs> we couldn't see it because it was attached to bubble cam. That's why they couldn't see it. Only our watch could see it. <laughs> Got a shout out to Rhett from his Uncle Tom. Oh, oh hi, Uncle Tom. Hi, Uncle Tom. Hello. <laughs> We've got folks tuning in from five continents right now that I'm aware of. I want to know what's at waypoint six, you guys. <laughs> Me let, too. Let us find out. Sort of scoping out the rock situation, but mm -hmm. not seeing a lot of a lot that uh, looks promising here. All of a sudden, it's gotten a lot more sparse. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a relatively flat part. Yeah. On the map, so it's like we should start going uphill before too long. It looks like the. Based on how we're moving, that the current might be uh, a little, a little uh, gentler here. No. Nope. <laughs> oh, it's still pretty high. <laughs> no. <Hey, nope. laughs> Nothing but skill. <laughs> <laughs> to roo. Is that a what is that? A sea star? I can't tell. Octocoral. Well, I, I mean, it's a heteropolypus mushroom, mushroom coral. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. So, you said a heteropolypus? Yep. Heteropulpus mushroom coral. Polypus, yeah. Oh, Raj. <laughs> that makes so more sense. Multiple polyp mushroom coral, got it. It yeah. is a mushroom coral, and then the scientific name for that is heteropulpus. Gotcha. Heteropulpus. So, so when I say like, oh yeah, okay, all right, heteropulpus, writing that down. Heteropulpus. Hey, so, man, would you mind zooming out on this? Oh, yes, it fine. Because I Thank like you. calling the sea cucumbers halotherians. It sounds cooler. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it just sounds so legit. Yeah. Heteropolypus. Saving that for the next time I and have to sound smart. You can <laughs> sound even smarter so when... So move on 300. Raj, maybe let's pause here for about five minutes again and then sure. see if there's any settling that happens. Okay. We already completed the move, so we'll hold it. Roger that. When people call it anthemastus, and you're yep. like, actually, I think I think it's heteropolypus now. <laughs> Speaking of which, because it changed its name. Yeah. Who changed it? How does that happen? Kind of has to be like a redescription. Oh, like it, they thought it was closer to one thing, and it's like not that. Yes. Not really. Something, oh, okay. something like that. I googled heteropolypus anthemastus, and it said no. Did not match any <laughs> results. <laughs> no. You don't say. I bet it's my spelling, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was my spelling. There are also times when a species is given a name by two different people who both think they discovered it. Oh. Right. Oh, yeah. Like when two people invented calculus at the same time. Did they? Isaac yeah. Newton. Who did? Who else? Oh. Uh, what was the second guy's name? Leibniz. Leibniz, yes, thank He's you. He's a German. Leibniz. Um, um, you must be really good at trivia. I feel like you just keep jumping into the conversation with really detailed facts. What's yeah. your degree in? Uh, my degree, uh, my first degree is in Ooh, wildlife he ecology. Said okay. First. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I'm seeing some rocks. Sorry to jump in. <laughs> no, no, that's, this is the time to jump in when you see what you like. Yeah. Um, Trying to get a gauge on how big those might be, but I think uh, some of the smaller grabs look really good. 
Um, sure. Looks like these might be loose. Most yeah. likely. Yeah, I, I'm, it looks promising. Yeah, we're, look, we're in like a small nodule field, so um, yeah. I think we'll have some luck here. And I'll set down briefly and then we can assess, yeah? Yeah, sounds good. All right. So we're all kind of on the angular side, I'm seeing some pillow fragment morphology. So um, yeah, anything that's um, not beach ball sized uh, uh, and pretty easy to grab, I'd say it would, uh, would work really well. Anything not beach ball sized and easy to grab. Yeah. No, no beach balls, please. You wanna go ahead and push on in there a bit, please? That's great. Probably this guy right in front of us, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, All he's right. like... Just might be... Yeah, too big. I want to double check the size. The, okay. the lasers are right above him. But also, ah, what yes. about the one just to the right of him? Like that larger one to the right. And it's not larger than it, but it is larger than the ones around itself. Um, that was a great way to describe <laughs> This one? Burn. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Yeah, give that one a shot. Is it less desirable right, looking? Light, please. Um, they all they all look pretty good here. Okay. I mean, we don't really know until we break them open, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, I have comms. Rudge. It's kind of the fun of this too on Could the geology on side. It, it's kind of like an Easter egg hunt. Come a little wide. Yeah. A more wide so you can see the arm. That's good. Thank you. You think you're getting a basalt? Sometimes you end up with something that's more like an andesite. Sometimes it's a hyaloclastite hidden in something that looks like a basalt. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one of those sitting on the bench right now that Beth was working on. And a beautiful sample for microbial analysis. And it's like this oh, clay and brick, like volcanic like... breccia. Yeah, that's a lovely size. Oh, All right, good. you want to push on in there, please? That's good. Do a little spin for you. Try not to drop it. Oh, that's nice. Good pick. Cool. Yeah. Um, where would you like it? Full uh, way, Side, uh, starboard D open. Yeah. You might come up against those corals there, so. Roger. Changing salvos. I wish this preset for the arm showed like more of the arm and less of the porch. Yeah, coming out. If people watching look down at sat feed three, you can see the bucket coming out oh. from the starboard side of Hercules to. Uh -oh. just Get the rock. I might need to move in, in order for you to get in there. So let me know if you don't, if you so you don't hit the coral. Oops. Okay. Uh, what was the what was the bin we're aiming for there? D, D, Raj. Oops. Oh, sorry. Sorry. rock samples that we're collecting are going to give us some clues as to the age and formation of these seamounts, which we're exploring for the first time. Sorry? I said I'm re-indexing. Reg. I feel like that's bigger than we thought that it was. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me with the rocks this time. Even with the lasers, nice. it's so hard. I should be able to fall in there. Just oh. 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 Maybe I could just... Yeah. 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 Oh. Nice. nice. Love that. Nice. Just needed a little coaxing. Okay. Let me just figure in. out how to All get right. out of here. Very nice. That should be a fun sample to work on. Cool, cool, cool. And that is 057. You're so on top of it, Zulman. 
Uh, it's been a while since we've pulled a Niskin. Do you think this would be a good site to do one, or do you want to? Do you think it would be better to wait? Uh, I don't think that the community has changed a whole bunch. Yeah. We have two already from within a similar community, so we can hold okay. off for now. Okay. Yeah, every single one of these dives has been pretty unique in terms of uh, you know, uh, species distribution, like population density. Yeah, they're like always dominated by a few species within the dive and then not that similar to other dives. Mm -hmm. You haven't right. seen as many sponges on this one as we did. No, we've seen sure. like some Walteria, some Sacocalyx, but Coming not up. as much Roger. as previously. Anyway, back to talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So shall we keep moving? So uh, I'll, I'm gonna right. run out ahead real quick, and then um, I still want to see if, like, for five minutes more, we okay. can swing. I did a bachelor's in wildlife Thanks. ecology, and then I did just finished my master's in science and natural history filmmaking. So basically, uh, making nature documentaries. Very cool. So cool. You gonna come up on the delta? I am. Gotcha. So interesting to see part of the frame. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's freaky. <laughs> Very strange. Just we had another geology question. Uh, if the mantle is heated by radioactive decay, does the background radiation levels around new lava flows increase? Uh, not really. It kind of depends. I mean, uh, well, yeah, not really. There are some uh, short-lived isotopes uh, that show up in very small abundance in new lava flows, but uh, it, it's it's not anything that is a safety hazard um, just in terms of, like, radiation. It's more of a safety hazard because it's new lava. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've actually I've actually done a little bit of work like that um, and uh, pulled some of those short-lived um, radioisotopes uh, out of um, fresh lavas. And uh, there, there's a technique that you can use to uh, isolate. Um, it's a, it's a short-lived isotope of polonium, part of the uh, uranium series decay chain. And we can actually measure some radioactivity from that using a very sensitive um, alpha particle detector, but um, it's okay. it's safe to handle. There's actually quite a bit of uranium and thorium uh, in uh, continental crust. It tends to concentrate in compositions like that. Potassium as well. So uh, technically. Um, there's there's a fair amount of um, yeah, not a fair amount. What am I trying to say here? My words are failing me. Um, so there is a little bit of background radiation that comes from uh, continental rocks, but it's it's quite low. Do what? Over here. You ready for it? Why do we have bright? It should be all green. Yeah, it's it, the double on. 
Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll go on three two zero. Three two zero. Yes, yes, yes. I'll get you three two zero. In fact, we'll go three zero zero. Roger. Bridge, this is Nav. Can we make a move uh, 50 meters bearing 300? Yep. Just taking a minute to get uh, reconfigured uh, with the ship, and uh, once we're ready, we'll uh, we'll get moving again. Looks like we may have swapped pilots for our ROVs as well. Yeah. Yeah, we're at the. Hello. I'm back on SBL. Okay. <laughs> so we're going. Yeah, Raj. Yeah. Three zero zero. All right. Uh, we are continuing to move uphill along mm -hmm. our uh, planned dive track. We're getting pretty close to our fifth waypoint. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, we're going to... You're really know. quiet. <coughs> yeah, we're going to go quite a bit higher as this track continues. So I know that Leela and I, uh, at the very least, I think all of us here in the in the, in the control van are uh, hoping to see a little bit of waypoint six before we swap out. I saw it, but I know that if I turn it and I wait for it to snap into place. I can still change it, yeah. Sorry, I came off the bottom. Can you open the iris a bit? Thank you. I have a question about how many more dives we have on this mission and whether the ship is calling back to port each night. Uh, we have been at sea since April 7th, mm -hmm. and we plan to return back to uh, Honolulu on April 30th, and we'll be at sea nonstop the whole time. Um, yeah, it took us a few days to uh, get out here, yeah. so... We're about a thousand miles from... Anywhere. <laughs> we're, we're, we're about a thousand miles from anywhere, it's true. <laughs> yeah, we are in one of the... Uh, remotest parts of the planet. We're probably equally distant from the Aleutian Islands on Alaska as we are from uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. Not exactly, but close enough. We're somewhere in the middle there. Uh, if you're just joining us, we are exploring an unknown seamount. Uh, un unnamed seamount, I should say. It is now known because we're there. Uh, we mapped it earlier. So, yeah, so the current's coming, like, as you can kind of feel it. <laughs> yeah, and so actually you're, you're going to want to... Uh, that, that should be okay. Yeah, maybe turn into it a little bit to... Yeah, so turn a little bit to the right and go forward on that. And if you look at the uh, marine snow, that gives us uh, some indication of what the current looks like. And you, you see it uh, blowing around quite a bit down here. Yeah, it's just because you're going downhill. So, um, yeah, so the Z bias is actually trimmed to be pretty level right now. But um, because we're going downhill, you just have to give a little bit of Z thrust there. Yeah. And I'll come down for you, too. Yeah, the way these uh, scientific cruises work, um, once we're out uh, doing science, it's uh, basically a 24-hour operation. 
we make the most of the ship time that we have out here. Um, as far as number of dives planned, uh, we originally had something on the order of uh, 15 planned, but they're always, um, you know, that, that can always change. Uh, and it certainly has for us because we had to uh, dodge some uh, weather early in the cruise and uh, we moved um, we moved actually further north of our uh, so that's, that's, that's good there Kylie yeah but I'm not my my heading's not able to get around there so but you're actually gonna be you're gonna be going back that way a little bit so now you can now you can kind of turn your heading a little bit and sail We ended up uh, doing some dives uh, further north yeah. of our original plants, and uh, as the weather is uh, improving, we're working our way back south and get some of our uh, some of the targets that we think are going to be um, really important to hit and uh, survey. Yeah, so that that's the that's the same heading now. That's that's the uh, that's perfect. Should be heading into the Papahano Mokuakea Marine National Monument. I can say it in my head every time. <laughs> um, hopefully, in the next day or two, uh, to resume the dives that we had planned to do earlier in our uh, cruises last week. I changed the order, but hopefully, the weather will accommodate us this time. Nice. Solid now. Cool. Just don't let it push me too far left, yeah? Yeah, then, then you just have to turn your heading and go back into it like you did before. Okay. Somebody just mentioned that the people closest to us are on the International Space Station. Okay, there's another fish. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, buddy. down in the lower uh, lower right corner. Same species as before. Friend. What was that species again? Yeah, it was, wait, wait, how did we remember this? It was more More day and tomorrow. And tomorrow. <laughs> and, and tomorrow, I'm sorry. And tomorrow. Oh, okay. More a day. Double. And that looks like a kumba. There's another yeah. fish. More a day. Up higher in the water column. Here. Kumba fish. <laughs> the video zoom? Not that tight. Not that tight. Not that tight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oop, okay, never mind. mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I should have. Um, That's okay. I should have clarified. <laughs> You're fine. Mm -hmm. Are you wide? Not all the way. Can you come wide? Yeah. Yep. And just push past that. Thank you. Next wall would be 280. 280, Raj. Huh. A viewer asking, how many of you wish you could go down in Hercules on these dives uh, rather than being topside? Not me. There's no place to sit. <laughs> it's a little chilly down there. <laughs> Just a tad. A little inhospitable. Currently 1.72 degrees Celsius. Just bomb it. I only brought one sweater. Next move 50 meters on bearing 280. Thank you. I know, big mistake. You always think, Hawaii, it'll be warm, they said, <laughs> as we pull out our winter parkas for recovery. <laughs> yeah, we're actually Not far true. enough north that um, we crossed into uh, some different prevailing winds uh, that are bringing colder air down from uh, uh, the north. And it's been a little chilly. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. We're in Hawaii, we say, after motoring halfway to Alaska. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're, we're all We all say all after <laughs> entering new time zone and deciding to keep Hawaiian time. <laughs> it's just easier. I think we crossed the international dateline 
yesterday. Uh, did we? Didn't we? I don't know. No, we, we didn't. We crossed that was we really yeah. close. That was, I misled you. Oh, all right. Um, I, I forgot to hit a negative sign on my coordinates <laughs> when I was putting them in the map. Negative 174. We're, we're very close to the international date line, and uh, because of uh, weirdness with countries deciding whether they want to be in or out of a given, you know, day time period, um, if you head due south from us far enough, you'll actually be in tomorrow, but um, in the future, right? But that's not uh, not really representative of the actual time zones as they are on Earth. It's just um, a factor of like political boundaries. It's a social construct. Yes, that's right. Time is a construct. <laughs> time is a construct, guys. Honestly, oh like gosh, weather actually yeah. looks pretty good. Borders are a construct too. I mean, like yes, they point. are. Do you like these rocks? Um, that sounds like a no. We just picked Pregnant one up pause. recently. So. <laughs> Raj, just, just thought it. I just saw so many, and I just thought... I thought of you. you <laughs> know, <so. laughs> I, I, I might appreciate wanted, the thought. I might want one of these. The who do I know who that might everything. like <laughs> these rocks? I know I know somebody that likes rocks. <laughs> I do like rocks. So how do you decipher between, like, small rocks, like the, one, like the smaller ones here, and, like, what you would call a nodule? Is a nodule just a small rock? Or are they made of something that makes them special? The ones crusty, that I've right? cut into in on a previous expedition often have small rocks inside of them. Mm. Sometimes what? they've even been well preserved enough that we've been able to uh, uh, use those for geochemical analysis. The nodules have rocks inside them. Some of them. It's the Some nesting of them egg of rocks. Yes. You can. Sometimes you, get a you cut one open, to the sea floor. and it's yeah. just like manganese that nucleated on something. It's just all manganese. A grain also, of sand. Sorry. What's that? It's kind of like making a pearl grow inside an oyster. You have to start with like a little yep. grain of sand. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes <laughs> and, it's a and, gastropod. And don't mow down. <laughs> don't mow down everything yet, yeah, Raj. <laughs> yeah, this this isn't the Midwest. We don't need to keep a lawn up here. We're good. <laughs> Sorry, I was off SVL. <laughs> Raj, just checking. We have a question about whether the Nautilus has ever refueled and restocked at sea. I don't think Not so. Not that I know of. Can we even take on fuel at sea? I don't think I so. I don't know. I don't know. Have to be pretty calm. Yeah. Ooh, what's the name of what that floating? What are you doing? What it's are you? Um, right there is what you're doing? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. You That's can the zoom. the running, the oh, running the hold that. Oh, sure enough. Oh. And he's running. Isn't that cool? Get Would you look at that? <laughs> okay, come on. I'll try to. Uh, that's good. That's oh good. Oh, my that's God. Good. It looks actually a lot like the one that we collected. Yeah. Uh, uh. It's kind of mesmerizing. It sure is. Oh. Kylie, if you want to do the, oh, perfect. I'm gonna go forward. That's yeah, what I was going to suggest. Go backwards, backwards Kylie. Backwards, Raj. So that it flushes out so you don't put it through your thrusters. Raj. Can you come wide, please? Sure thing. <laughs> Sorry, what was that there, Rip? Oh, I was just going to say, um, if good. you want to do the cinematic thing now, w w which this has already happened, but we should just uh, hold our, our angle and let it come off the screen. Yeah, uh, okay. And then we did. Oh, that is a, okay. Well, I made a that's cinematic a, choice. That's Video how uh, naturals. <laughs> because so few things actually happen while you're watching in nature, we usually let animals walk off screen and onto it a couple times, oh, uh, yeah. so that we can pretend we're telling a story, basically. <laughs> <laughs> in wildlife, film, we're like, look, it came on screen and now it's walking away. <laughs> You're giving away all your secrets. Really, you just move your camera and let it sit there for a while until it walks a little to the left and <laughs> until it walks a little to the right. <laughs> I'm glad to know <laughs> that, though. Yeah. So apparently these moridae that we've been seeing are uh, cod-like fishes. I'm not sure the difference between cod and cod-like. <laughs> I've never seen a black cod before. Like that. That's a thing, though. Wait, it is. They it is. You Do can you eat remember that. this? Yes. Oh my god, I'm so proud of you, Kylie. I remember because Bob was like, "Yeah, it's 
normal. And I was like, I don't want to eat black cod. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't even like regular cod. That's why I, that's why I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want to do that. That sounds gross. So what are these sponges called that um, look a bit like um, baskets here? You want to zoom a yeah. little bit? Damn. Yeah. Are in the family Euplectility, but uh, that's actually the one that we collected earlier because we d are not that sure about the rest of it. But they look like this corb corbitellinid, I can never pronounce it, sponges, which is below Euplectility. Okay. Um, and corb, I actually, the way that I remember I that. I think there's an associate in there. Is because corb is like oh, really? Coop in German, which means uh, basket. Can you zoom any more? Oh, maybe I was wrong. It's just, I don't like that. Meep. Meep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I am still um, you know yeah. I'm not Jess <laughs> so I need um, more uh, visuals yes yeah visuals are good otherwise I get a little um, concerned about where what the vehicle is doing uh um is it a little easier for you when I'm zooming if I go uh, slightly slower? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then and 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 not as tight in until I get it steady. Sure. And then uh, you know I'll I'll be like okay I feel good about what the vehicle's moment mo momentum is in different directions and then I'll ask for like a a bigger a tighter push. Sure. I'll do a slow partial and then we can go in tighter when you're ready. Thank you. I that's mean, not on this necessarily. Yes, but, but that's time. really actually. Do you want to zoom on that? Sure. What's is that the rock? Yeah, There's yeah. Something yeah. In there. Wait. Yeah. Well, it's kind of think I just like a shadow, but I think you can push the rest of the way if you'd like. If there's more. Looking down into the throat of the sponge. Ooh. Yeah. Stay Swing still. Swing back. Stay still. Sorry. <laughs> That's why I don't like being on SVL when I'm practicing. They're doing great. That's a nice shot. Very cool to see the inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, but you might need to start bogeying again. Roger, yeah. come wide. Also, right, if you want to make me really look good, as I start losing it, just kind of slowly come out. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. I, I, uh, I'll let you know what I'm doing, That I just don't want to make you think you're moving backwards or something. Raj. What is going on? No, was, you're doing great. I mean, there's there's also that little matter of the current. Can you help Small me, Jessica? Matter. It makes yeah, it hard for up? everybody. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Sure thing. Yeah, I'm going to look down so you can see the porch, and then I'm going to look up, OK? Is this current what's keeping? Hurricane Argus right now, so far, southwest. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's a. It's surprising, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you're full extended. Yeah, you're good. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, that, that should be good. It's looking a little bit down and a little bit forward. Yep, no worries. Does there tend to good be... Good to keep moving? Yeah, I think we're good to keep moving. You good there, Kylie? Okay. Bridge, this is nav. That, uh, another move to a zero fifty meters. DVL with cursor. We have a viewer from the Netherlands who uh, wants us to have a, a good dad joke this morning. How do you check if something on board is still edible? You check the, its shell by date. Oh, so. <laughs> that's a good one. Is that a fish on the bottom right? Or is that oh, a shadow? I don't know. Uh, that might be a fish. I'm leaning towards it's a shadow. It's a rock. It is a rock, okay, yeah. yeah. Is it a rock or is it a fish? <laughs> <laughs> I 
the question the fish want us to be asking. Also, sometimes <laughs> there are rockfish. Yeah. So sometimes True. you're always right. Yeah. <laughs> True. Just those sponge there on the right of the rock. Yeah. Yeah, given how different and just distinct uh, all of these dives have been so far, um, do we have any idea, just like generally ballpark, um, how many of the species we're seeing have been uh, like fully characterized? Mm. Fully Am I wording that right? Characterized? Like, do the like we? You said we know Down a lot of species. <laughs> yeah. Um, like. Percentage-wise, I don't know. I don't, I'm not like that expert in this region, but most of what we're IDing, I feel like between the guide and what we know, we're IDing down to like either family, def like most of the time family and, and sometimes genus. Okay. And then so, and sometimes species, but so I don't know, like I know, I was like, 70% oh, of like, the time, 80% of, of the time, I, I'm not, I don't know what, what, what species it is. Okay. And like 60% of the time, or 50% of the time, don't know what genus it is. Like that. But I'm also not an expert. But I think a lot of this is not super well characterized. Is that trash, or is that a sponge? Like, I think it's a sponge. Like, right here? I think yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. a sponge. No, not like there, right, like right, south. Right in front of us. Yeah, right there. This? Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a sponge. That's yeah. It I think we've seen some like of those skeletons trash. before. <clears throat> What's that bushy um, it, coral behind it? You that, know what it, the lasers are on? You know that one. You I, know that one. Do I? Is that the one that looks like the lungs? Uh, <laughs> no. Well, then I don't know it. <laughs> you do though, because it's one of the things that I remember with a funny. Is it a crazy agorja? Crazy, crazy, Chris Gorgia. I'm adding syllables. Chris, you Gorgia? <laughs> right. I'm like putting your whole sentence <laughs> in the name. As we'll probably have to start moving a bit more into the east now. Roger. 12 to 4 after dark. I think we're all good. So oh my gosh, are we like coming to a close? No. Yeah, it's like oh my gosh. something. Almost. We have like 40 minutes left. You. How did this happen? <laughs> so what's the... So, Crisy Gorgia, Crisy Gorgia, that's mm -hmm. it? That's how you say it? Crisy Gorgia. Yeah. Okay. So, Crisy Gorgia is the genus. Um, and I think we actually do for these ones, the bottle brush, Crisy Gorgia, know the species, but I don't remember it. What's that right there? That looks like a sponge. That's a sacocalyx sponge, I think, if it has a stalk. That's yeah. Okay. Video zoom. That's good. No, it's not. Uh -huh. I don't see the, a stock. It's actually more foldy than I thought. It's probably a ferraid. Oh, it's just like a smaller version of the other ones we saw. Um, it's a little different because it's not like cone shaped. It has its own like little branchy lettucey yep. pattern. Mm -hmm. That was good. You can come full wide. Yeah, because zoom, I keep moving. zoomed out the spun the sponge stalks growing oh, next to it looks pretty. like its stock. But mm -hmm. I gotta go. Yeah. If you want, if you want for uh, ease of navigation, if you yeah. turn your head more into the slope, yeah, and then so that you, um, yeah, like, like forty-five that. degrees, yeah, and then a little bit more actually. Roger. Then you can get good visuals, and you might then you won't have to worry about running into the corals on the side. Okay. I was never worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was looking up the moray because I was getting curious about what these might be eating, mm. and yeah, I didn't find an answer. But I also haven't <laughs> looked very hard because they they look like they've got these huge eyes, yeah. and it looks like they they are um, sort of geared toward uh, hunting. Mm. Huh? Maybe. Who knows? Not I. Because mean, like the eye kind of makes me think that they that they are pretty pretty sensitive to uh, I don't know whatever might be producing light around here that isn't us yeah I wonder if like the big eyes help with well yeah. they're like there is I, I wonder if the big eyes help with with taking in more more light you know yeah, right I think that's 
because they don't look vestigial. At least mm -hmm. not to my eye, but I'm not trained in this stuff either. Say good morning to my crew in New Hampshire. Hello, good morning, morning New New Hampshire, New Hampshire. <laughs> 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 they did mention that they're getting a double mic kind of sound. Oh. Um, I'm not sure if that's Oh, they might have it them. playing out of more than one. Yes. Um, like, uh, yeah, more than one tab or something. Does that happen sometimes? Mm, How do that could be a thing. If anybody else is having that issue, please let us know in the chat. Starts furiously looking through the settings. Yeah. Okay, Kylie, yes, that dear. thing, the little red thing, bottom left, or it, middle oh, left. Oh, yeah, it's a, um, a, a hetero, heteropulpous, uh, and not, so not, not, not to an, am, am, not amateurus. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nailed it, Kylie. <laughs> Used to be, not anymore. Heteropulpus, no. New, no, really new heteropulpus uh, hoodis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're losing it. <laughs> Tell me we got it. I have to see it written down, down and then that'll help a lot. Because oh, I'm just going off of the sounds, and that's not. <laughs> I'm the same way. I need to see it written. <laughs> oh, you're pretty. Mm hmm. The way I said it was how I Googled it, so it explains that there was no <laughs> results. Um, well, yeah, why, why did that thing come up? These sponges have some really amazing structures mm -hmm. and some really amazing smells. Oh, is it starting to smell in the lab? Um, well, I stayed away from it because I really don't like how sponges smell after uh, having to scrub them out of corals a few years yeah, ago. Yeah. I um, see. But they were, uh, they were mentioning that the... Uh, uh, the sample that we had from a couple of dives you ago it was starting to smell as it dried. Interesting sponge. I think I'm good here. I'll try to just change Yes, they do smell as they dry. Guys, I'm getting yeah. a spam call from New York right now. Like, why? What are How those pink things? Are you finding me? Shrimps or something? I don't know, actually. That's a great question. Man, we're getting spam this far out in the ocean. We got a real I have problem. So many spam calls. Since they just want to let you know Is about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Your your boat's extended warranty. <laughs> I mean, these spam calls have officially now. Now that now that we're getting spam while we're on a ship in the middle of the ocean, it's, it's like forward. garbage. Garbage is everywhere. Spam calls are everywhere. Shall continue. The move. Yeah, we're a really yes, messy please. species. You know that. Approach this is nav. Another move bearing 270.50 meters. Thank you. 270. 270. Roger. And back row, just to check in on our agenda here. Um, are we going to be looking for a rock at waypoint 6 or along our, along our travels to waypoint 6? Um, yeah, I'd like to pick something up near waypoint 6 if possible, but. Um if an opportunity presents itself, uh, once we get closer there, then uh, we might we might sample a little earlier too. Okay, Roger that. And does Beth is Beth already fulfilled on all of her samples? We only have one rock for Beth right now. That was right at the beginning, correct? Yeah. So it might actually be good to look for one for Beth too. Yeah. Okay, Roger that. Because uh, we're we're gonna start ascending at eight. Uh, I think it's on deck at eight. On, on deck. deck on oh, okay. So that, yeah, that is six. earlier. So maybe so. by five they should be coming up. Uh, six. Six. Yeah. I guess I will be staying up for uh, recovery then. You should get a nap in between our watch and. I am so bad at napping. A four-hour nap though. That's also that's gonna be a good thing. Val is a machine. Val does not sleep. <laughs> oh no, I sleep. Just I actually rocks. sleep really well on ships. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you you might have to push a little bit more ahead there, Kylie. I I am. Yeah, I just didn't want to yeah. do it. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely get a sample into the coral. Path at so we're going to try yeah. to lateral around it. You know, Reg. Oh, what is that? that they also That's didn't an umbellopathies, I this? think. Yeah, can we zoom on that? Yeah, let's do that. I can do a quick zoom. Okay, quick okay. zoom. Okay, like very speedy. Actually, situation. More than umbellopathies, uh, it might be. Video 
Can you just, just catch that in the frame if you zoom in? I uh, have to wait for it to be a little lower in the frame before I can zoom any more on it. Um, is it possible for you to tilt the camera down? Oh, there we go. Oh. Uh, like that. Let's okay, see. it's not on Melopathies, but I will tell you what it is in a second. I really right, do have to go, though. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you can go. It's fine. I, we okay. saw it. Come wide. Uh, Did we miss something on the right side? Come wide. The is asking. It's wide. Oh, um, is it? Yeah. I don't know. Gosh, there's a big feature. I, I saw that, but I didn't. I don't know what. I'm coming up. We may have to review later. Alternatopathies. I think that's what it was. We're just going to have to come up and go forward. Yep. It's like Dr. Seuss. It's kind of interesting, these rare patches of hydroids, because I've, I don't know, I've, like in the Lao Basin, there there's some sites where you just see hydroids everywhere. Just cover rocks. What is a hydroid? Such a good question. It's one of those, it's a Nidarian, so it's like sort of closely related to uh, corals, but I can't tell you more than that. It's a hydrozoan, so it's, it's yep. within a different class than sure. corals. And what is it? Uh, is it visible right now? Okay, I think you're um, in the clear, We've Kylie. seen a couple okay. of, like yellow ones that look like they're growing on a, a dead skeleton. They'll usually like grow over things like that. Okay. <clears throat> they have a similar kind of branching structure to some of the coral. They've got multiple heads, that's the hydro part. Typical mouth with tentacles around it that most Nidarians have. We have another dad joke. Sponges don't smell. They have no nose. I don't like it. They do <laughs> not have a nose. But they <laughs> actually do stink. They do. It's just Should weird. Should I, um... <clears throat> mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, so you should turn your heading and then um, boogie over. And then you want to, yeah, you, you're... Pan and tilt's pretty high up right now, so you're pretty far off the ground, actually. Ah, Chris Kelly's in the chat. Good morning, Chris. Really? Good morning, Chris. Oh my gosh, Chris, you're around for our first 12 to 4, midnight to 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> We're going crazy. So, yeah, the laterals, the laterals, if it's if you're getting tossed around by the flow, the laterals don't really work, so. Um, yeah, so it looks like your heading's good now. Just go ahead and go straight on that. Yeah. Yep. So actually, if you want to even turn your heading a little bit more to the to the right, then you'll get right in front of me. Nice. Yeah. It's all good. We can get the heading first, and then you can go down in the delta. about nine and a half hours into a planned 14 hour dive. That's good. All right, so go ahead and kick it forward a bit. <laughs> yeah. So don't go by the Argus view right now, because Argus view is, um, it's, the thrusters can't keep up right now. So just go by this screen here. And so it looks like you're right in front, which is good. And I think you're just a bit far out there. So if you want to hold off there, then it'll all come towards you. And just maintain that position, then it'll be all good. I had a question about eDNA, uh, since the eDNA can travel great distances on a current, 
Do we use a concentration based on a calculation in assessing the samples? A concentration based on a calculation. Concentration of what? Nice. Um, if you want to wait they there, can. Yeah, you can. You can. Do you, I think. Do you account for the fact that they? Yeah. A lot of it's traveled it's for I some distance. Yeah, that's good. Is it from that area? Just try to do um, full lats, and if that doesn't work, we'll turn our heading. Give the pods a second. And then, yeah, nice. Or you can even sit down and let me come towards you. You can even zoom in on that lovely little guy there. Um, I am not participating in the analysis of this, but um, I don't think that they're actually, I don't think that they're adjusting um, whatever they're sequencing based on well, we don't know the distance traveled um, by whatever DNA is in the sample. Yeah. I just, so I don't think that they're attempting great. to adjust for that. But we'll definitely take into consideration the conditions under which each sample was collected. That's okay. You're doing good. No, you're doing good. This is really good. Yeah, just keep the lateral on, and then um, if you want to just stay there. So you can also sit down here if you like. Yeah, it's hard to say if like an eDNA sample would be like statistically representative of we completed uh, the them. Area. We'll wait until you finish and then we Raj. Yeah. You wanna sit down a little bit further? <laughs> nice. Nice. That's stable now. That's good. It's a nice shot. My eyeballs are starting to hurt. <laughs> yeah, it is getting to some pretty, pretty weird hours. I'm like, all right, we've seen the bamboo for us. I need new <laughs> content. You got this. You got this. We're gonna hit waypoint six. Waypoint we're six. We're I have there. high hopes. <laughs> high hopes. Hey, Rhett, are you full wide on the Atlanta view there? Um, I believe so, but I'll try to go wider. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's full wide. Full wide, Raj. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about stick lock and all that. I'm hoping one of the dryers is opened up by the <laughs> time we're done. Uh -huh. Doing laundry in the wee hours of the night, Val? I did laundry earlier, earlier today. I just haven't been able to snag uh -huh. a dryer yet, so it's just like holding in the washer. <laughs> Awesome. All right. I think we've caught up pretty well. Suleiman, are we going to keep a 270? Uh, yes, we are. Okay, Raj. So we'll make a move. Praise this is not. And Kylie, my, uh, so Adelana is also not uh, Another holding, move, 270, 50 meters. So you might want to just keep coming around to the left a bit. Yeah. Uh, whatever feels comfortable. You can either let it push you there. Try that. That's always kind of fun. Yeah, that's great. No, all good. That's Got some good. clarification on that eDNA question. Yeah. Do you get a higher concentration of eDNA from the environment in which the so sample was sure taken? Make sure you don't hit this guy. Mm. Compared to an expected lower concentration of drifting in eDNA due to a dilution over its travel journey. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, we'd hope that 
communities closest to where we are and most similar to what we're seeing or what we're picking up the most are you drifted or DNA are you moving? from? I think this is a Kumba McCrurid. Okay. Um, especially because DNA sort of degrades okay. over time. Uh, it's if pushing not you. Because you are at the edge of waypoint six, if we can just go inside, it will help. Raj. If not still in the animal that created it. Um, if you think you've still been drifted, I will hold the move and I will make different move towards north. Just let me know. Alex, I think I think Kylie can get there with that move on um, once we get it stabilized. Yeah, we're yep. still dealing with quite a bit of current so. down here. Thanks, Alon. Alright, so you got the end of your tether there. We've got a few so of those. So now fish. Hercules officially almost uh, in the area of way point six. Alright. If you need to do anything. Um yeah, maybe we can look down yeah. there. Is there anything that looks like Beth might be interested in it? Ah, uh, keeping an eye out. Looks like to the right there might be some good stuff. Agreed. It's, a, it's like a small nodule field. You can look for something a little bit bigger than a nodule. Actually, Suleiman, would you mind uh, canceling that move then? Yes, we, uh, I will. Bridge, this is Nav. Hold position, please. Um, can we take a closer look at those? Sorry? Um, possible... Yeah, uh, I think we'll be okay. Candidates there. Kylie, do you want me to zoom? Okay. Mm -hmm. Assuming they're not, like, welded into place. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just saying that you might be up against the corals there. But, uh, yeah, but if we, yeah, so we p just push a little forward. And then you'll be out of them. Yeah, all good. Yeah, that's that's great there. Mm. Hold that. I'm gonna drive your camera, okay? So you can see your bumper. It's okay. There you go. Do you want a full rack back there, please? Yeah, I think um, we might have some luck here. This one uh, seems to be okay. That might be a good grab. Roger. Go yeah. ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Right, you can go ahead and push on in. That's great. And we'll um, make this a bath sample. All right, so you wanted a wee one? No, that doesn't seem like you. Not this um, one. Did you want this one up here? Yeah, let's go for the slightly bigger one. Yeah, Reg. Wider shot, which might be in reach. Yeah, we're working off of screens here, so we don't have binocular vision, so depth All right, perception. Alright, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. It's a little tricky sometimes. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's nice and round. Nice mm -hmm. and round. I got a kind of questionable grip on it, but it'll be good enough to still. in the front. That's good. Yeah, thank okay. you. Yeah, full wide, please. And Kylie, you want to confirm that you're full rack back? Roger that. Yeah, that means, uh, what are we on, uh, Niskin 3 coming up? Yup. Cool. Yeah, go ahead. Is there anything floaty in this box, by the way? No, there's a Beth Rock and Lambda, so we'll go for Omega. Raj, Omega. I think it is. Awesome.
we have a viewer from the Netherlands who's making Chanakop's earrings out of clay. Oh, that's oh, cool. And is looking for any tips on the anatomy. Uh, I don't know, but let us know your Etsy page. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even have pierced ears and I'd buy those. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, get and close that puppy up. Big head, cute, cute face. A little frowny looking, spiky. And we're gonna go want a water sample with this as well? Yes. All right, great. And then I think we'll have to pick up because we've drifted a little bit. And we're aiming for three or? Three, yes. Raj, and I'll just turn on the. We're gonna take a water sample using a Niskin bottle. Oh, would you mind looking a little right there, sorry, Kylie. Pull yeah. One of these loops. Thank you. That's good there. Just so I can. Okay, you can go ahead now. Thank you, Miss. Eyes on the prize, Raj. Do do do. So pulling on the loop. We got too many of them. Puts a plunger into the end of a tube that traps water inside Ready? from this location. Done. Reg. Eh. Get out of there. You don't want all those. No, we don't. Okay. Awesome. It's a nice little sample spot. I'm happy. So those are 058 and 059. Um, Suleiman. Awesome. We have a geologist joke. Oh, yeah. Why are romantics and geologists so similar? Because they date rocks. Hey. Oh, no. No? One yes. They're not wrong. One focuses on sentiment, and the other focuses on sediment. Oh, oh I really like your answer, though. <laughs> That's so good. Um, Suleiman, it's 058 and 059. Nice. I have a question about uh, what's one of the funniest discoveries or moments so that we've had on an expedition. Reg, good, nice. Mm. Are you sure you want to know that? They Me? ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's because there was extra swing there. Yeah. Thanks, Layla. So it was like the, because there's so much cable layout right now, but it just will keep on swinging for a while. Do we need some time to just catch up? Oh, uh, no, Kylie's catching up right now. Okay, cool. Would you like to move or uh, stay a bit over here? That's a Val question. Val, what are you thinking? Um, I'd say let's keep pushing ahead. Roger that. All good. It's pretty funny in retrospect, but one of the kind of goofier moments I've had while out at sea was uh, coming on to a morning shift on a dredging expedition. And uh, we, we had a dredge going overnight that a uh, uh, graveyard shift was monitoring. I get there in the morning and the dredge had come up and they'd emptied it out. And for all the hours that we'd been down on that slope trying to collect samples, um, we came up with a small piece of spatter lava less than an inch long and that was literally the only thing that came up wow. oh. graveyard was so upset that they they just set aside an entire lab table for it and made a huge announcement about this is this is the very productive dredge that we had overnight and just left it for the rest of us to deal so with in the morning three four zero ready for it All right preach this is now Fifty meters on bearing 
three four zero please three four zero reg i'm going to change my heading now kylie One of my funny moments from this week was realizing that when you sleep on your oh, side, yeah. oh, the channel claps. and the boat Chana rocks claps. back and forth, you tend to roll out of bed mm. in your sleep. <laughs> Gotta put a pillow or a towel underneath your mattress. Ah, uh, there it is. Wow. Oh, Look at so you. cute. What a good angle on him. Yeah. I love their little feet. I know. The big head, small tail. Still, just this total coral thicket going on on this uh, seamount, on this ridge. These dive reports have been pretty easy because it's like, well, nothing changed the whole dive. We got to this waypoint and then that waypoint, and it looked the same still. Easier than the realm of the sponges. That one was similar too. You know, there was a ton of stuff, but it didn't change that much. Like differential buttons changed a little throughout the dive, but. Gotcha. It was really just throwing in like the anomalous stuff. Yeah. Into the report. We had all that dead sponge material in the last dive. I'm not mm -hmm. seeing any of that in this one, which is interesting. Yeah, I think I think a lot of us kept expecting uh, to find a lot of live sponges as we went up, and that just didn't really change at yeah. all. I don't know what to make of that. No. Kind of like the, the half-dead corals that we're seeing here. Oh, Chris, do you want us to get some additional close-ups for you on any of the bamboos? Yeah, why don't we get a, whenever there's a second RV, why don't we get a close up on the bamboos for Chris to take a look? Okay. There. Are all these ones up front bamboos? Yeah. Yeah, so, wow, any, big, any of that. Big Larry's. It's a bamboo forest. So pick your favorite. Okay. <laughs> I would, I, would, I would suggest parking it. Yeah, Raj. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna get there. No worries, uh, whenever, whenever you're situated. Well, I want it to be a good zoom. So I'm gonna sit. Down, down. That's good. Then we can just tilt up. Raj, I'm not on the ground yet. You can also try forward into the rock there, and then, if you want, I can press your auto heading. Nice. See if it startles. Oh, video zoom. That's good. That's great. Looks like they're branching just above the black lines. Actually, different, but not at the black lines. Do you want me to zoom further? Yeah, yeah, if you have it, sure.
There's a little delay, so it might take Chris a second. Sure. It says something about look for branch points, perhaps, where tissue is missing. Yeah, we can see it. It's fine because okay. we can see through the tissue here. But okay. I think it matters if they branch at the black lines or a different... Looks like it's branching between. right above it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it did look like that, but then it, I feel like I saw sections where it was branching from more like the middle. No, you're right. Most of it looks like right above a black line. All right, we're probably going to have to pick up and go pretty soon. Is sure. Chris satisfied with this? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Roger. Come wide. That's a cool colony. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. one was alive. Chris says probably internodal branching. Yeah, so in between the black lines which helps ID it. Hmm. Oh. This I all learned from Chris. Oh, I'm gonna tilt your camera down, Kylie. Roger. Yeah, so Rhett, the hydroids that we're seeing periodically are those green things that are just going off the right side of the screen. I see. Yeah. That's very down. Yeah, I'm just That's giving you down. reference here. I don't like it, Roger. <laughs> All right, so we're uh, coming up here pretty soon on a change of watch. Uh, seems like things have just flown by, so uh, we'll probably uh, kind of go in and out a little bit as uh, uh, folks are relieved. So we can try to catch a few hours of sleep before, <laughs> uh, uh, before uh, Herc comes back up. I have a question about whether we think the face of the slope um, has anything to do with the differences in organisms that we're seeing. Yeah, the direction, the orientation of the slope relative to whatever currents we're experiencing definitely matters. Um, also, the steepness of the slope can sort of determine what chooses to settle there and not. Um, so, yeah slope aspect can definitely play a role. Video zoom. Hold that. Nice. What's, what's that little orange That's guy? Wow, there's, there's a lot going on. Guy is a star pathies, probably. But the black coral next to it is um, a different kind that we have not really seen yet so far. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, how many different species of coral do we have going on here? One, two, One, three, two, four, three, five. Four, at least. five. Yeah, we've got a primnoid, two black corals, mushroom I think corals. Those are, they might even be two different kinds. One of them, the tahinotis, another one, the like sort of darker red, and then the bamboo. Little cups, yeah. What about those uh, white things underneath the rock? Um, oh, and there's a cup coral. Yeah, there's two of them. Um, underneath right, the rock, you probably need sponges. To pick up and, yeah. and uh, let. Okay, come on. Hello. Come on, please. Good morning. Right, please. Yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Can you sorry. Come on. Sorry. Thank you. What's up? Morning. All right. Looks like uh, back row is in the process of being uh, switched over, so I'm going to go turn, uh, turn the console over. I'm listening. I, I'm tr I'm desperately trying to. <laughs> Raj. Okay. 
Uh. Sort of. Yeah. Uh. All right, Steve, can you come full wide on Herc Zeus, please? Full extra super duper. All right, thank you. All right, good morning, everybody from the Pacific. We just did a shift change. It's now the four to eight group. Uh, thanks to everybody who's been staying tuned in. We are just continuing to explore. I'm ready for exploration. <laughs> Absolutely. Good always. morning, everyone. Good morning. Is this our first AM watch? It, it is, right? I think so. It definitely is. How did everybody sleep? Not enough, but <laughs> good enough. <laughs> so what direction are we continuing to explore in? Just going up still, right? Or? We are heading mostly north. OK. Thank you, Lynette. Yep. Sounds like no. Lynette, did you just say something to me? I didn't have my headphone in. Yes, please. Delta, Full please. speed ahead. So did you just say come up on Delta? Yeah. Bridge, nav. Can we move five zero meters bearing three five zero, please? Thank you. When you have a sec, Lynette, can I get a DVL reset, please? Yes. Thank you. Yep. All right. Are you ready for a little zoom on Atalanta? I am, if you are. I am.
Lynette, when you have a second, can you show me the distance to waypoint eight? Yes. About 500 meters. Okay. A little less. Thank you. Yep. So I kind of want to try to get to that summit before we have to come up. Mm -hmm. So that might mean we just need to go across bottom a little faster and not stop to inspect as much. No rose smelling, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> Because we only have about an hour and a half before we need to come off bottom. Yeah. Okay. And making it 500 meters <laughs> will take a little bit of time. Indeed. I have front porch, please. Thank you. Does everybody have a little time for a quick introduction around the around the room for the new people? I'm Trevor Herc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. I'm Shelby Johnson Rodney, Marine Conservationist, Science Communicator, and Science Communication Fellow with Ocean Exploration Trust. Annabelle. I'm Annabelle Adams BA. I'm an undergraduate student, and I'm in, I think I'm in the intern program on this ship. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> okay, you're Not a scientist. Really. I'm a scientist. <laughs> I don't know about my title. <laughs> I'm doing microbiology. Okay, that's all I <laughs> You're an intern if OAT is supporting you, but you are being supported by the Cobra Project out here. Uh, anyway, hi, I'm Beth. I am a senior research scientist from the Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences uh, in Maine. And I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting up at 3.15, 3.20 is a thing. A little rough. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diane, and I am a science manager in training. It's my first Nautilus cruise. And this is Steve in the video chair. Oh, this is Ashton. I'm an Atalanta slash Argus, uh, ROV engineering intern from Texas. Uh, I'm Lynette. Uh, I am a mapper and navigator with OET. What's that uh, Annabelle, purple can you circle? Pull up your science chat. Purple circle. It takes forever uh, for my look. Hello, hi everyone. My name is Holly Pope and I am the cultural liaison on this trip. Yay! You go. <laughs> uh, I was looking on the left, um, underneath. I don't know. Left. Now it's getting towards the middle. Just left of the lasers. Purple circle. It's not like purple on my monitor. Cool. Just to the right of the lasers. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know if I'll get a good look at that. We can look at it, kind of. This way. Go ahead, zoom. Some anemone looking yeah. thing. Okay, come wide, thanks. Keep on keeping on here. Okay, yours is taking forever to load now, too. Yeah, what's going on with science chat? any of our scientists ashore? Give us a moment. We can't get our science chat to load. Hmm. Can I look over your shoulder, Diane? Yeah, absolutely. Mine is working. Uh, yeah. Feel free to look over mine, Annabelle. It seems like it's oh, up over you. here for whatever reason. Chris Kelly is on this morning. Says good morning to you, Beth. Thank you. Good morning. Early morning, Chris. Puppies keep him awake. Yeah, <laughs> hi to Katie. 
updates, always welcome. Yeah, just a little friendly reminder. <laughs> All right, let's keep ship moves going, I think. Yeah, let's just keep going. No stopping at the moment. Do we know what these coral species are that are in view currently? I would love to tell you, <laughs> I can't. Oh, here we go. Finally, I got my science chat <laughs> open. Um, Bridge nav. I know most of this is our bamboo corals. Some of them don't appear Can as healthy as others. Can we have another five zero meters bearing three five zero, please? Thank you. Have some, so some uh, hemichoralids, I think. I can't tell from this distance. Diane, when you have a second, can you tell me what biology samples have been collected? I'd be happy to do that. Do, do, do. Calm down. Looks like we have two different species of glass sponge. I can let you know what they believe it to be. Corbitellinae is one of them. The other, they are unsure, so that's fun. A little bit of mystery. Okay. Yeah, we have a crinoid that came off of Chris Kelly's wish list, probably that I only saw crinoid. That. Yeah. I saw that when I woke up, and I was like, that looks so. like the one on the wish list. Xenometrae. Great. Yeah. I can knock that a off. wish list guy. Uh, and then a black coral. Do you Teleopathy. There we go. <laughs> Potentially bathyopathies along with. And that is what my notes say on the last shift. So are a lot of the samples that are going back to the lab, um, once we sort of pull up from dives, are they getting put in some sort of ethanol solution to get shipped back? Or how do they usually get uh, sort of stored so that they make it back in the best condition for folks ashore? Yeah, that's a good question, Shelby. Um, and today we've got a nice little variety of samples. It all looks pretty tidy at this moment. Um, we've got a number of rocks for Val for some of the geotracing and uh, kind of figuring out when this ridge and seamount may have formed. We've got two different rock samples for Beth, looking nice. at the ferromanganese crust of microbes. Uh, we've got a few different eDNA. And those are water samples, which get filtered. And that gives us, uh, hopefully, an indication of the background communities. Mm -hmm. You can um, trace little snippets of things in the water, essentially. And um, those will get filtered. The water gets filtered. And the filter itself um, is what goes back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. It gets put into a, a little buffer solution. And those go back at room temperature. Uh, and then our biology species will be put in 95% ethanol and just like a small sample jar. And those also will be at room temperature. Occasionally we may uh, freeze something to negative 80 and that's usually something that we would do for a very specific DNA process or RNA process. So that's a, a little bit about what we'll be doing once we get Herc back on board. Nice. Um, and secured uh, the science team uh, 
which includes our scientists aboard and data loggers and anyone who has some identification on this bio might come and join us in the lab for processing. Oh, nice. That'll be helpful. Yeah. We'll take photos. We'll take some measurements of some of the items before they go into processing. Um, yeah. So it's going to be a fun, exciting morning. I know. Yeah. I'm that. looking forward to it. So we got to get down there and take some pictures. Yeah. Look at some of the things. I think we have it's always here. neat to see. The Do you already have one over there? To I see them come up. Yeah. I still, I still need to see the beard sponge. Can you um, type into the chat when we collected the crinoid so that Chris can review the video? Yeah. Someone's wondering, how are we getting a video of Hercules? Somebody in the front row can explain that. <laughs> of Hercules? It is like, how are we seeing Hercules? <laughs> well, from Atalanta. <laughs> <laughs> Eye in the sky. Eye in the sky through the ROV that I am driving that you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to see Atalanta. We need a third ROV. <laughs> who's going <laughs> to see that one? <laughs> the answer is always more ROVs. <laughs> right. More cameras. More <laughs> ROVs. For anybody watching at home, our current depth of Hercules is... 2,215 meters. And the goal is to go to 350? Is that the goal or no? Sorry? I don't think. Was uh, 350 meters the goal going up from the dive plan? Um, I don't remember what waypoint 8 is, but it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, about 80 meters shallower than this, <laughs> if those are 10 meter contours on high pack. What did I see in this dive? 2150-ish. Oh, that was a different number. Never mind. And for our viewers at home that are wondering why we are just flying by the stuff without checking in on any of it. Um, we only have about a little over an hour left of bottom time and trying to get up to our final waypoint at the very top of the summit here. So we're just kind of moving continuously to try to make up some time, cover some ground. Oh, I was thinking about elevation. According to the last shift, this, uh, these biological communities and the rock community has um, been very similar for the entire dive. So I was like kind of excited to see what's up there near the mm -hmm. final waypoint. Yeah, so we're seeing a mixture of bamboo corals some black corals, bridge nav, occasionally a hemi coral. <laughs> we have another mm -hmm. step, five zero meters, bearing three five zero. The occasional paragorgia. Thank you. You can see the. Actually, we're picking up current measurements with the DVL. I'm already offset again. Oh, yeah. That's pretty wild. Do you want to reset? Sure. What the heck. For our audience at home, if you're looking at channel three or the lower left quad, um, you can see that the positions of ROV Hercules and ROV Atalanta are offset from the ship quite a ways, uh, which is an indication that there's a strong current pushing us to the southwest compared to the, where the ship's orientation is. If there was no current, we'd be hanging closer to the back end of the ship icon.
Oh, they are back there. Hmm. Just gonna do a little systems check back here. Oh, the good, it still works. Systems check. <laughs> Looking good. Oh, Working no, great. No one has changed this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <coughs> For folks watching at home and um, maybe wondering where we are, we are diving on an unnamed seamount type feature. We're on the southeastern ridge of that feature. Uh, we are slightly outside the boundary of the Papahanaumoa Kuakea Marine National Monument. We were, uh, we've experienced some significant weather to the south of us that has prevented us from doing operations within the monument for the last few days. But we are optimistic that the weather is improving, and hopefully we will be heading back into the monument later today. Oh, awesome! That sounds good. Yeah. Know that. Oh, here's a good question. Is the time that we sort of explore around a seamount limited by the number of other seamounts that we sort of need to get to? Why is Herc's time limited on a dive? That's a really great question, right? We could, well, we in some ways could decide, oh, you know, we want to stay, stay down here, here longer. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, the scientific team uh, and the exploration goals are to visit a variety of seamounts in this region of the Papahanaumoa Kuakea Marine National Monument for a variety of reasons. Um, one is to understand the animal diversity and how that varies yep. in this part of the world's ocean and the deep sea. Um, but also we want to understand the origins of these seamounts. And in order to get a good picture of kind of the geological history of this region, we need to sample as many different types of right. seamounts as we can to see if there are patterns or if there are kind of one-off conditions. Um, so yeah, we need to, we want to dive on a lot of seamounts yep. on this expedition. So there's only so much time yep. that we can give to any given dive. Yep. Um, we also are collecting samples for biological analysis on every dive. And the longer they sit on the seafloor um, between when we recovered them, or when we sampled them on the seafloor and when we recover them on the ship, there can be some deterioration. That's so. True. You know, if we did a 48-hour dive, our samples will, you know, have been sitting in the bio right. box for a while. Can you um, speaking of samples, you want to rock here? <laughs> uh, not right now. Okay. I think uh, we'll wait till we get closer to the summit or okay. the next waypoint. Roger. But thank you for asking. Yeah, I want to want to make cover some ground. Yeah, cool. Definitely, we don't need to stop for a rock sample. We can just grab on the go. Yeah. Thanks. Seeing some bottle brush corals going out of the bottom of the screen there. Oh, is that that one down bottom left? Uh, no, the, that was a sponge. Oh, um, beautiful. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe a bolosoma. I'm not exactly sure which one. The bottle brush are the ones that look like this. They look like a bottle brush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. We've got some black little. corals <laughs> here, the, the ones that are kind of this yellowish brown. Oh, uh, Chris corrected me that that sponge was a secrocalyx, mm. not a bosoma. Yeah, and coming back to compromises on dives, yes. right? <laughs> Another yes. one of them is that if you want to cover a good bit of ground, it means you can't spend a lot of time looking at every single yeah. thing, right? It's kind of no like how you, tempting it may be. When you go <laughs> on a hike, right? It's like, am I trying to get to the summit or do I want to investigate the moss and right. everything on the trees? Which is usually my speed, whereas yeah. my partner wants to get to the top as yeah, fast as possible. Yeah, I was asking some people who are like, it's all about getting to the top. <laughs> yeah. I love the way you put that to investigate the moss. Yeah. <laughs> Got to slow it down. This 
So based on Stephen's laser test, this water is a little bit more turbid than what we were looking at last night. Are these taller corals bamboo corals or? Yeah, okay, okay, that makes Are sense. Are they healthy? Like, will they we might consider be. these healthy? Yeah, uh, they often have more of this, uh, some of the species have more of a stocky look mm. to them. Yeah. If you look at our um, animal guide, so some of these uh, Isidella species, Akinella, I'm not exactly sure which ones we're looking at. Chris Kelly just chiming in with an idea on those yellow black corals that uh, Beth pointed out. Storopathies, um, although we have been also seeing a yellow black coral that is bathypathies, so unless we got a closer look then. Yeah, and again, uh, a lot of these we've been seeing throughout the dive started um, about eight hours ago, got onto the seafloor, slightly shallower depth. Here's a straightforward question. How do you get a job like this? <laughs> Which job? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, there's different ways to just get on the ship, if you're wondering. If you're a student and in school, you can apply to be an intern. Multiple different kinds that Ocean Exploration Trust offers. Here on board Exploration Vessel Nautilus, you can be an ocean science intern, video intern, mapping, ROV piloting, piloting um, all kinds of things. Um, my role as a science communication is usually geared towards graduate students and, and working professionals. So if you're in that realm, um, you can apply to do that and be on board that way. Um, a lot of the lead scientists um, on board collaborate often with can Ocean Exploration Trust. Can we get a partial zoom on that, Trevor and Stephen? Sure. Uh, this one. Circle it one more time. There we go. Uh, zoom in, please, Steve. Ooh, bouncy. Yeah, just a partial. Fine. That's good there. Oh, that's a good one. Thanks. So seeing a couple different things in the frame of view there. Oh, and there's something wrapped around it. Yep. We've got some brittle stars wrapped yeah, there's around. There's two types of black coral, I think. Two? Three? Yes. Yeah. Three. Several different species of black coral there. <coughs> and see the hold fast on the top left with something growing at the tip? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Cute. Okay, come wide, please. Yep. Thank and you. Move. That's a big Hopefully we don't give anybody Argus. whiplash doing some partial zooms as we're continuing to move up this relatively steep slope to our next waypoint. Shelby for the No, oh, there's a Walteria there. Oh. Communication fellowships. Mm -hmm. I know you all come from very different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. What what range of people is that is that fellowship geared towards? I mean, I, it's literally almost anybody in this field. Um, Hardcore scientists have been science communication fellows, um, folks who maybe even work in like adjacent industries and may not even be super geared towards marine science, but they just have a respect for the environment or they maybe work more in general communications, have been in this position. Um, you know, I got it when I was a grad student, so yeah, it really differs. Um, I think. Some people who work for different sanctuaries, they may have been like the um, sort of like the resource coordinators or the research coordinators, um, research or resource, sorry, it sounded the same for a second, um, I think have been science communication fellows, so. Can we get a partial yeah. zoom on these, please? The little Great, white ones? Yeah. Yes, we can. It's really, really, sky's the limit. Go ahead, Steve. Little minis. Those are awesome. Ooh, I love this shot. This is beautiful. Are those dead? 
Uh, we got a little info coming in from our scientists ashore. Asako and Chris Kelly are you chatting about those. Out wide. So chatting about those small white fans, uh, Asako chiming in with styloastrids. Stylasterids. Sorry, mispronunciation there. The names are very long. <laughs> I believe it's stylasterids. Thanks for that. A pretty steep wall we're climbing up yeah. here. I was just ridge. about to say the same thing, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's going to flatten out a little bit in just a moment. Right, that's what I was thinking, that those <laughs> little ones were actually not necessarily, uh, or they're more of a hydrozone. Are these all the same types of corals? Uh, no. No, they are not. Lots of different varieties. We've We've been lucky to get a lot of different types over these last couple of dives. I feel like in this one shot, there's probably at least 10 species of coral. Yeah. Yep. Can we get a partial zoom on this? Yeah, sure thing. Go ahead, Steve. A little bit different. Oh, wow. Is it a mushroom Thanks. coral? Thanks. Yeah, there's center. Can I get some scrollage here, please? Thank you. So getting some info from our scientists ashore, um, those white fans, the a little type ones. of hydrozoan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not the ones we're looking at right here, but the no, little the ones we zoomed on. No, the small ones that we saw previously. Got about another 15 meters or so till we reach our next waypoint. About 15 meters in elevation, I would say. <laughs> hmm, someone's wondering why are the coral different colors in an environment with no natural light? That's uh, a great question. Yeah. Hmm. There's a couple different ideas. So one is that the color is just um, not intentional, but a right. part of the yep. tissue and how mm -hmm. it looks when we're shining light on it. Um, there are also thoughts that there may be relation to fluorescence. Mm. 
um, although that's not very well documented down in the deep sea. Um, Thanks for keeping us moving, Lynette. I love that we're progressively getting farther away from the ship. Yeah, that we are definitely swung wide. Current's getting spicier as we get taller or higher up. <laughs> That's a great way to describe the current. <laughs> <laughs> on my on watch changeover, Rhett told me it was windy down here. <laughs> yeah, it's very windy. Can we get a partial zoom on some of these? Yeah, how we can go for it, Steve. On these corals. Yeah, several different brittle stars attached. Also see some mushroom corals again on down on the bottom. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, thanks. Look at those large hold fasts on this. I know. Mm -hmm. Got to hold on down there with those currents. Yeah, I guess <laughs> so. Oh, someone's wondering, are the rock formations that we're seeing from lava? They're watching from Greece. Hello, from Greece. Yeah, hello. Um, I don't know if it's in your afternoon, so thanks for joining us. Yeah, we're diving on underwater uh, seamount structures, ancient volcanoes. Uh, underwater volcanoes. So yes, what you're looking at is very similar to what you would see if you were climbing up a volcano on land, of course, minus the coral. Um, uh, oh, some more Walteria there, as well as oh, yeah. types of coral. Um, yeah, so rocks source from deeper down that have been erupted onto the seafloor or in placed magma. When they come out, uh, when the rocks are really eruptive, they get a nice shiny texture to them, a glassy texture that looks very similar to obsidian that you would see on a volcano on land. Um, sometimes they're a bit more dense with uh, actual crystals inside, indicating kind of a slower cooling of the rocks, maybe not as extrusive or eruptive. Got a Another type of bamboo coral there with a whip. I haven't seen that as often yet on this dive. Oh, going back to the question about coral color and light, Chris Kelly gave a little bit of information saying that these bamboos are probably bioluminescent if he's using the correct term. Um, they can generate light when touched. Yeah, right. Cool. Can we just get some partials on this area that's really dense? Yeah, you bet. I'll make it See a some of those larger holdfasts? That's where scientists are sure remarking or curious to see such hey, large Go ahead. bases. Oh, wow. Ooh. So, and again, and especially for Steve, it looks like uh, our one of our uh, experts ashore looks like might have just joined us and uh, don't have a lot of time to get close-ups because we're on the move trying to make up some distance to get us to the summit before we need to come off bottom in the next hour thanks you can come wide all right thanks science Steve yes science Steve hey Steve <laughs> shore Steve <clears throat> now we just need a lounge, Steve. <laughs> a little fish just going off to the frame in the left. Little one.
quick around the world from folks tuning in. Uh, we have the UK, Can US. Can we get a partial on these here? Yep. Canada, Finland, Norway, Taiwan, Austria, Hungary, Brazil, Italy, Japan. Thanks, everybody. No New Zealand? Um. I guess it's early. No New Zealand, there. yeah. No New Zealand. I'm sure they'll pop up. Some little mushroom corals there. Yes. Um, the lower left. It looks like every single branch of these okay, zoom in, please. corals we're coming up on has a brittle star on it. Wow. This oh. is the spot oh. to be if you're a brittle star. Oh. Having a town hall meeting. I know. Yep. Or, or brunch. <laughs> brunch is more fun. Brunch yeah. is definitely more accurate, too. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Wave your hands in yeah. the air. <laughs> Thank you very much for those partial zooms. Okay, yeah, those were anemones. Anemones. Yeah, correction. Not mushroom coral. It looks like mm. more brittle stars. Yeah. As well. And they're eating the corals? Or, well, not necessarily, no. Uh, you can see that it looks like all the particles are coming from the right hand uh, top of the screen to the bottom, which matches uh, what you would see if you looked at high pack and how far away we are from the ship, that the current seems to be coming from the northeast to the um, southwest. And so the brittle stars may just be trying to get up into the water. When was the last time we took an eDNA sample? Ah, I think we took one with the last rock sample for you. Okay. The, so that was fairly recent. Yeah. Check in time. <coughs> 1345. Looks like we're almost at waypoint seven. In this field of view, it looks like there's several decaying bamboo corals, either broken or laying down on their side. Oh, yeah. The water, definitely cloudier water. <laughs> yeah, someone just said this looks like there's more marine snow or debris on this dive. <laughs> yeah. Um, Trevor, is it possible to collect any DNA sample while we're on the move? Yep, sure. Right now or later? Um, Now-ish sounds good. It just, there's so much on the water and I'm just curious. Okay, I'll get set up for it and we'll do it as soon as we can. So that is gonna be Niskin 4. Niskin 4. We can maybe come a little bit closer to bottom when we're yeah, ready to Yeah, I'm way to too far off. This <laughs> is not right. Can I see craft and bubble, please? Yeah. Someone's wondering if this sort of increased amount of marine snow is maybe from just the location or related to the weather. Um, I don't know. <coughs> I don't know that it would be related to the weather. Um, we are on a set of seamounts that are kind of on the east side of this ridge feature that we're looking at. Uh, so water that, if the water predominantly is coming from northeast of us mm -hmm. and then it's hitting the seamount as it's trying to move, and so all that water is just kind of be pushed up. Um, as compared to the dive we did 
the other day on an unnamed western ridge feature um, there was another kind of ridge just to its east so that the eastern ridge might have been taking more of the particle load the water might have been clearer mm. confirming four yes four four looks orange to me swing and a miss all, All right. right, triggered. Bottle four is triggered. Oh yeah, and it's a lovely shot over the Niskins. You can see just <laughs> all the corals over there. Yep. <laughs> so hopefully that'll be a nice mixed signal of what we're seeing on the bottom and what's floating around in this water. Thank you. All right. Lynette, how much further do we have to go between waypoint 7 and waypoint 8 on uh, lateral distance? When you have a second? Yes. You bet. Front row, folks are wondering, has Herc ever used different lighting like UV or infrared to sort of see fluorescence or different types of things on corals and animals? <laughs> that is a question for y'all. <laughs> Trevor's got his mouth full. <laughs> <laughs> Snacks are important at this hour. Take Sold your out. <laughs> take your time. I can also jump in while Trevor is occupied. Sure, um, thanks, Ashton. Yeah, oh, actually, this is Beth. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's OK. Uh, yeah, so in general, Herc, Herc uses the lights you're seeing. Um, only a few uh, scientific teams have tried deploying other types of light um, in the deep sea. Uh, so whether that's infrared <coughs> or deep red or UV. Um, because we often, we need to see the lights as humans. Right. <laughs> uh, and so it just makes operations a bit more difficult. Um, but some of those studies have indicated that um, you get a slightly different picture of what you're seeing on the seafloor in terms of what responds to that light. Um, but it's not a common feature. Mm. I was wishing we had a black light when we were diving with all those neon yellow corals. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. <coughs> I have seen uh, us dive with low lights and a low light camera, a super high sensitivity lens. Mm -hmm. um, that was pretty pretty neat, looking for all sorts of essences. What is it? Luminescence, phosphorescence, fluorescence, bioluminescence, whatever. All, <laughs> all those, the essences. All the essences, <laughs> yeah. How about uh, thermal imaging? Have you ever used thermal imaging on vents or anything? No, but I bet that wouldn't go very far. I bet infrared would not go very far. Right. Yep, I got you, Lynette. That was zero six zero. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need me to read back the last few samples? Lynette or, and or Trevor, is it possible to bring us to the west just a little bit so we're following the crest of the ridge? Yeah, we were diverging from the ship's track and now we seem to be coming back towards it. So yeah. we'll have to adjust ship track on the next ship move. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to jinx it, but I think the currents are slightly better here. Yeah, they, they seem to be. <laughs> Yeah, vehicles are bearing almost due north now. Neat. 
We're only 6,000 meters off the transom, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? About 100? Looks like there's another Sacrocalyx uh, sponge just off to our right. Mm. another type of sponge there too yeah i was just about um, to say what's that one as easy for me to identify why don't we do a partial on it <coughs> let's do a partial on that's it. okay steve partial me maybe a type of euplectidelle it's another one with the little pink okay, great. things. Okay, great. Yeah, I zoom in a little more there, Steve. What are those pink things? Are those associates? No. Oh. Don't hmm. know. Little micro shrimps? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any idea. That's full zoom. The That's all. All right, we're like getting... Single polyps. Oh, they kind of do, yeah. They got little... Tendrils, oh. whatever they're called. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Commensal anemones is what our bridge scientists have. ashore are telling us. Cool. Oh, Can nice. we have a move five zero meters bearing three four zero? Thank you. It's a nice shot for still capture. Have you been getting good images off the still cam? Yeah. Great. Yeah, uh, reviewing some of the earlier dives. Especially on those di our second dive where we just had so many colorful corals. That's awesome. That's great. Ooh. I right. think our current is back a little bit. Hello, current. <laughs> I'm trying to keep a heading here. <laughs> it heard you, Ashton. It was like, ha ha, here I am. <laughs> you did jinx it. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> but we want to hear from you, so it's okay. It's <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Strongly from the left. <laughs> hey, you get pulled around because the tether spins you. Uh. Here's a question to think about. Someone said the last dive had a high density of corals and sponges and marine life, but less cloudy water. Yet this dive has more marine snow, but lower density of corals as filter feeders. How does this relate? That's a very well thought out question. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? I was uh, busy doing something else. Sure, no problem. Um, someone said the last dive had a high density of corals, sponges, and marine life, but less cloudy water. Yet this dive has more marine snow, but lower density of corals. As filter feeders, how does this relate? Yeah, so uh, it's not always just a one-to-one -one correlation between food and animal density. Mm -hmm. There could be other environmental factors at play. So That's true. one of the things our scientists ashore have been discussing in our uh, scientist chat portal is whether some of the water conditions here uh, might be influencing <coughs> the health of the corals that we're seeing. Maybe slightly lower pH conditions that are. Um, Ooh, jelly. Oh, looks like a tinafore or a jelly. Yeah, go, oh, jelly, go. Jelly. Um, so maybe that's impacting both the diversity and the density. Uh, it's hard for us to say because we don't have those kinds of sensors. Right. On this uh, vehicle. Mm -hmm. Would that be a valuable thing? Uh, pH is valuable, but those sensors can be a little persnickety. Persnickety, love compared that Compared to the more robust sensors that we have. What, how does, what does one do to solve the persnickety-ness? Yeah, That's a good question. Yeah. It's uh, you know, there's been million dollar Oceanex prizes to try to 
build better pH sensors. Oh, wow. Um, so. So it's not an easy problem. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Many people are trying to solve it. Okay. So you can't just, can you not just buy an off-the-shelf one then, I guess? Yeah, the problem becomes calibration. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Yeah, but so that that's only one other factor that could be influencing what we're seeing here. So not everything in this water it may be food also. <laughs> True. Um, uh, looks like there's a sponge with a some kind of crustacean on the inside that just went out of the frame. Brittle stars hanging out on the corals there to our left. This looks like another bamboo coral here in our field of view. Can we get a partial zoom on that bamboo, bamboo? coral we're just about to pass over? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Well, luckily, it doesn't look like it's being munched on unless yeah, we'll see something. Yeah, this one looks nice and healthy. It does. Oh, wait, there's like a little bit missing. Maybe it got eaten a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. A little micro snack. Mm -hmm. Micro snack. I can't see. It looks like nodal branching. No, internodal. I see it on the left one there, or the middle one. Yeah. Great. Thank you for the partial. Thanks. It's hard to tell that stuff. I think we're going to make it. Last waypoint. Yeah. I'll try to give you guys a more dramatic step to the west here. We have yeah, the ship. You. Ship is moving west, but the ROVs are moving east. So, yeah. Love that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of pendulum action going on here. <laughs> we're trying to get the perfect alignment. It's not always easy with mm -hmm. trying to coordinate three vehicles. Cool little false summit here. Yeah. Really nice densities. Mm -hmm. Bridge, nav. Have a look around here. Can we have a step two zero meters bearing three zero zero? <coughs> Ooh. Um, sorry? Yeah, you can complete this step. Thank you. That's a nice shot. Mm -hmm. Anyone else get a little bit of vertigo there, looking down the slope? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. It's a long way down. It is. Can we get a partial zoom on this sponge while we're going by? Sure. If possible. Yeah. It'll be probably a bad one. Okay, then don't worry about it. Well, but we can make it work. We can use it for science, not for beauty. <laughs> okay, zoom in there, please. It's probably as close as I can get. Ah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Similar to that one that we last saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think we were calling that their the Froyella. Chalasma? Not quite sure. <coughs> yeah, I've lost the thread on that one. Another sponge there. 
In the center. Yep. We've also got a different one. I don't know, those are, I guess, mm -hmm. kind of the same over there. Atalanta is just bouncing around like wee. <laughs> <laughs> like a kid on a mattress. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a kid on a leash, though. <laughs> <laughs> or a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> or a puppy. Looks like a Walteria coming into frame up here. Interesting, we can barely see the lasers now, or less than before. Oh yeah, that's right. That cleared up fast. Steve, you want to do a quick Walteria zoom? On that last dive we did, when we would see these Walteria, we would often see them associated with these yellow crinoids, but I haven't seen that on this dive. And also so many uh, seemingly dead sort of skeletons of them, right? right? Thank on you. Yeah. Oh yeah, on the last dive, yeah, we did see a lot of where these unhealthy Walteria. Uh, still quite alive. You know, I don't think we've seen this cruise as the, the shrimps trapped inside the sponges. Yeah, mm. true. They just live there and hang out and in jail their whole life. Trevor, is it possible to um, pivot over to the left? Sorry, I missed a yellow plexarid. Down? Yeah. Yeah, we got time for that. Oop. It's just below. Yeah, right right in here. If we could get a partial zoom on that. Sure thing. Right Go ahead, Steve. Center stage. And there's, uh, just as we were talking about, Walteria that don't look great. Oh, yeah, right below it there, yeah. Yep. Uh, mm. And bottle brush. And yeah, thank you. Bridge nav. Can we have another step two zero meters bearing three two zero, please? Thank you. We had a partial on this sponge, please. Yeah, you betcha. Mm -hmm. Before mm -hmm. it goes out of the frame this time. <laughs> Actually catch it. And OK, go ahead, Steve. You can zoom past it. It'll slide into frame. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, well done. Lovely. Well oh. played. Pretty bouncy. So it's got maybe those little well, commensal anemones again, as it's well on this as far some side here. little squat, squat lobsters. lobsters. Let it clear frame also. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Nice one. Hard to get any glamour shots on this one with all this current, but we're doing our best. Do Look a at great the little job. one tucked in the rocks there. Oh, yeah. Just to the right of the lasers. Ooh. That's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it must nice get shot. some current oh, through there. Can we get there. Uh, another view of this yellow one here? Yeah. I think that might be the same. That. Yeah, there must be some current through that little rock. Totally. Yeah. That's cool. A little mini tunnel. You want to do a half zoom on the yellow, please? That's fine there. So the sponge Ooh. we were looking at just a moment ago, we think is a Lefroyella species. Nice, nice video work, guys. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. excellent. Thank you. It looks like there's a little Paragorgia there too. This one is pink. Well, what's this big thing up here? 
We're getting into the last push for sure. Very steep here. Is it dead sponge, maybe? Oh. Oh. I can't huh. see. What is, that? What, is what is that? Oh, it's just this thing. Wow. Oh. Oh. It looks so big on the Atalanta camera. I shouldn't say just that. It's, you're doing very good, Coral. I think because it's like, because uh, <laughs> it's horizontally oriented, it looked bigger from above. Totally, yeah. There's a big sponge though coming up. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Thanks, Steve Askovich, for the uh, photo confirmation. I'll try. Oh, now you're going the wrong way. Oh, sorry about that. Now I'm going the wrong way. You can keep it under ten though. Okay. Eight, eight to twelve is fine. Okay. Thanks. I'm pretty, pretty far ahead. I feel like uh, when they asked her t-shirt sizes, they should have also asked if her morning people or evening people. <laughs> oh. Doesn't, well. Well, you have to be both, right? Yeah. If you have shifts you gotta be both, yeah. <laughs> About a 4 a.m. Here's a nice sponge. I'm going to build some suspense here. Oh, you? Build some suspense. What sponge? What are you talking about? <laughs> Bridge nav. Can we have another step? Oh, yeah. Two zero meters bearing Ooh. 330, please. Wow. Dramatic. We could, yeah. That is gorgeous. gorgeous. Spend a little bit of time looking at this oh while yeah, you our bet. scientists ashore help us with confirmation of what can we're looking at. Can you zoom and keep it in frame there, Steve? Sure. We get lasers off, possibly. Yeah. Go ahead, Ash. the lasers off. Little wow. Walteria underneath it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is it growing Peeking off out? of it or is it actually oh. underneath? I Where is it? Think yeah, it's under. Huh. I think it's under. It's trying to poke out. So I think yeah. this is maybe another Euplectilidae oh, yeah. species. I'm not quite sure. Do we have our lasers on? Am I not seeing? We just, no, turned, we them just turned them off. Oh, okay. You, if I'm you just trying to get a size on that guy. We'll oh, yeah. look back in a minute. A little over a meter across. Ah, okay. Yeah, you can kind of judge by. Beautiful structure. Incredible, yeah. Oh, Chris is typing. This is good. <laughs> Cauliflower. Yeah. <laughs> Colander also. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. So All right. Thanks, Steve. Do you want any more on that one? We're good. Okay, cheers. Hertwigia. Hertwigia. Which is a species of the eucalyptilid. Cool We're almost to waypoint eight. Woohoo! Woo yeah, We're yeah, getting yeah. there. Thanks to our expert navigation between Lynette and the bridge. And we do not have a strict uh, bottom of the hour off bottom. We can be a little sloppy with that. So if we get into sampling or whatever, that should be fine for. Okay. Yeah, all that. The goal is to be 50 meters depth at uh, oh, There's a little crab over here just coming off our... Oh, oh he's yep. lost a fight. Oh, yeah. You should see Ooh. the other guy. Oh, man. <laughs> Pew. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do a crab that. zoom, please. Crab, crab zoom. zoom. Oh, that thing's Popeye. Look at those arms. Just got little legs coming back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's it looks like they're regrowing. Ooh, it's, it's got Bad black legs. on it. Yeah. Black on its like Yeah, you got more zoom oh there, Steve? Yeah, left on like the board. upper left. Oh. oh. What is that? Oh. Baby leg. Yeah, this one looks a little damaged too. Yeah. Though, like. Yeah. Oh, it just got stuff growing on his claws. This is a rough this shape. This is a old school. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's seen some things. Oh, man. <laughs> he's yeah. been through let a lot. Let him live Sorry. in peace. Oh. Yeah. I feel like I've seen some things <laughs> seeing him. <laughs> He's been down here for a long time. He got grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even great grandkids. <laughs> that crab was on the ark. <laughs> Bridge <laughs> out. <Yeah. Shit. laughs> Can we step five zero meters bearing three three Loaded. zero, please? Thank you. Um, mushroom coral off the side, a bottle brush coral. Little one, a couple of them here. <laughs> one there. Oops, I didn't mean to have a crab. Sorry. <laughs> oh, quick.
quick question about uh, the Niskin bottles that we're firing. Are they going to be used to measure and ask questions about pH, biolog biological load, nutrient levels in the water, um, in different locations in relation to coral density? Um, so the primary reason we're collecting Niskins is to filter the water for an eDNA study to get an idea of the power of that tool for assessing biodiversity in comparison to what we're seeing. Uh, um, I wouldn't bother because we're we still three beams. So don't generally collect samples for nutrient analysis. That's a little bit beyond the scope of what Nautilus does. Um, occasionally, for some of the Niskins, um, my team is collecting samples mm -hmm. for measuring nutrients, but not for measuring pH. We don't have that capability out here. Got it. Little Paragorgia here off to the left. Cutie. That's what I drew on my cup. Nice. Oh, does the difference in pressure affect the samples when they reach the surface? I know temperature is really critical, but how about pressure? Uh, it depends on the type of sample we're collecting. Mm -hmm. um, so probably none of the animals are very happy right. coming <laughs> up. Um, and they'll, you know, corals will have the polyps retracted, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's not as dramatic looking as, for instance, if we were to collect a fish or something with a bladder mm -hmm. um, where the pressure difference is really extreme. Um, might be worth trying to collect some rock samples around here, but I know we've got a ship to move in, so... Um, yeah, do you want to do it here at the top? Either one is fine. Okay. Can we maybe just get a partial zoom on this pile in this yeah, area? Yeah, totally. If we do want to do it here, we don't have to hold the ship position because we're already way ahead, but we do have to be quick about deciding. Okay. Yeah, you can keep ship going. Okay. I'll just grab it, move, and then store it. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay, zoom in, please. Good there, probably. Oh, these are shiny. Anything here call out to you? No, not for the uh, geochemistry stuff. Thank okay. you. Okay, come wide, please. We'll see what we got at the top. Would you like a porch light, Trevor? Uh, no, that's fine. You can give me front porch again. Wait till we're okay. ready to go here. little info on that crab that we saw. It is a type of king crab in the family Lithodidae. And that's from Chris Kelly. Thank you for that. I bet we could do a reset now. Now that okay. I got four beams back. Yep. Thank okay. you. Yep. stocked sponge coming up. Oh, quick follow-up question for you, Beth. Someone said when you mentioned nutrients, when you were talking about the Niskin samples, uh, what parameters are you measuring? Um, primarily nitrogen and phosphorus. Mm. Phosphorus, cool. Check out that stock sponge there. Yeah. yeah. I think those are so rewarding because something with such a skinny stock and such a big bloom or whatever you call it yeah. would never. Zoom in, please. 
Never stand up on land. It's cool when the stalks are like the length of Herc. I don't even know how it stands up underwater. It's so cool. What's interesting to me with these dives we've been doing, mostly outside the monument lately, but um, you know, on the dives we did on the Voyager seamounts to the further south, we just saw so many um, polyopagon sponges, and we've barely seen them on this expedition so far. Thank you. Do we know how old these sponges can be? I don't know much about sponge dating at all. I think it's relatively difficult to date them, but I, I'm not sure. That's a question for Chris. Yeah. But stalked sponge we saw was a sacrocolic. Sorry, I forgot to mention that while we were looking at it. Looks like another one of the plectilids going by on the bottom right. Interesting fault feature in the rocks here. Yeah, that's cool. Going from the bottom left to the top right. Oh, wow. It's very distinct, that like line going mm -hmm. up through the middle. And is that coral on the left have two different types of sea stars on it? Let's have a look. I don't think we've... Let's have a look. Go Are ahead. they munchin? Looks like Zoom one in. might be munchin. Yep. Yep. We've got oh. brittle stars and Ooh. a sea star. And a sea star, yeah. Two Ooh. sea stars. And then oh, definitely... Oh, two sea star and then a, yeah, brittle star. Oh, Good yeah, eye, Annabelle. Sea, sea star there. Yeah. yeah. One. Can we have a look at this brown one just to the left? Yeah. Oop. I know the sea stars are very attractive, but <laughs> we've got <laughs> some folks online that are interested in Not going to be able to get stable on this one, but... It's okay. This is a good partial zoom. All right, come on, please. Thank you. Yeah, so the... the uh, Brownish yellow is a trisopathies, black coral. Little crab down there also in, in and amongst that. So for our audience at home, you might have noticed that the sea stars were nomming down on the coral. <laughs> coral livery is a interesting process happening in the deep sea. We're starting to top out now. It's getting a little smoother and flatter. Great. Uh, let's hope we can get some rocks up here. They look all very. They look all very attached. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, maybe we over here will see something. Um, can we do a step of four zero meters, bearing zero one zero, please? Thank you. Right there under the lasers, maybe. Yeah, I could do that. Potentially, yeah. Some of these might be pick upable. to watch my back bumper there. Okay, zoom in please. Those look pretty. Those look pretty attached. attached. Yeah. Yeah. Come mm. wide please. Yeah, thanks. Maybe over to the left here. Yeah, maybe. Okay, we should be at waypoint eight in just a few minutes. Thank you. Yep. Oh, and a little fish to the left. Oh, yep. Oh yeah, there's oh a fish yeah. in the bottom left corner. Bottom left, oh Just yeah. Just right here. Want a quick zoom on them? Sure. We can. All right, go ahead, Steve. Since we made it to the summit, we can spend a little bit more time looking around. There's a rock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Does that rock interest you, or should we keep looking? It's probably not great for um, okay, come wide, Steve. the geochem. Thank you. It looks a little crusty. There's Roger. Crab, crab off to the left. Sorry about all the equipment and frame here. Just trying to look down as much as possible. Yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, what about something under the lasers here? Is that still too, too crusty? Can we get a partial zoom right in front of us? Steven? Yeah, go ahead. Mm, 
Yeah, not, tip down. not great. Let, let's keep looking. Okay, come on. Sometimes it's hard to find rocks at the top of a summit because there's... Yeah, big time. They like to fall down slope. Nice shiny rocks up here, mm -hmm. getting scoured by the current. Yeah, we should try to be off bottom at 40 minutes past the hour. I think that'll be enough. Okay, so time. about 20 more minutes. Yeah. Okay. So try to wrap I'm things up at 35 past. And yeah, I'm optimistic we'll find a rock in the next 15. Cool. Maybe in this little... Maybe in this valley thing. Yeah, crack. this little crack feature. What do, you, what do you guess, right or left of the lasers? Left. Left. <laughs> Maybe in this spot there might be some. We can spend yeah, okay. a little bit of time looking. Might even be able to sit down there. Okay, Steve, zoom in there, please. We got some of those weird brown rocks as well. Weird brown rocks. Okay. Can you pan down just a little bit, Trevor? Maybe this one? Yeah, okay, come wide please, Steve. Gotta nestle in here without bumping anything. Do you wanna hold position? Yes, please. Can yeah, sure. Bridge, nav. Can we hold position here, please? Thank you. The one just top and, uh, sorry, beside the lasers, just slightly left. Beth, what's attractive about this rock, um, just to give people an idea of what we're looking for when you want a sample? Um, I want something that is the right size. <laughs> I want something that's got a little bit of <laughs> angularity to it, which is a lot of the stuff up here is very crusty. Um, uh, when we pick it up, we want to see if it breaks. Do you want full grip for us on this one? Uh, just pick it up for now. Uh, we'll hold it in front and see see what we got. Okay, hey, porch light, please. Porch light coming on. And zoom in, please. A little bit of shiny spots. Shiny. Yeah, definitely been. Okay, we got some oxygen. We got that on chocolate filling, side. chocolate peanut butter filling. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the right stuff for us? Potentially. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering if it's sediment on the inside. We've gotten a couple rocks lately that have been just like a manganese crusted sedimentary breccia almost. Do you want me to smash it? Yeah, try, try wide, squishing please. it and see if it's soft. I've already squished it. This, okay. is, this is full squish, but I'll give it a quick bump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. It seems pretty hard. Okay, cool. Forward box? Um, no. Echo. Sorry, Sorry, box. Please. Echo. Echo. Understood. Craft, oh, you have craft arm, good stuff. Uh, anything floaty? No. Thank you. Okay, open the box, please. All right. We'll just go halfway. Bio box opening. So for our audience at home, we're coming towards the end of our bottom time here. Maybe another 10, 15 more minutes. But we made it all the way to the end of our dive track, which is a small victory. Okay, <laughs> close the box. Closing. Uh, 
Nice job, team. We made it. Okay. <laughs> and here we go. Um, so, Trevor, I'm waiting to hear from our scientists of shore if there's any other um, coral or sponge species we want to get a couple zooms on while we're up here. Okay, great. Can I front porch, please? And I'll, tear, I'll turn porch light off. All right. Oh, oh. sorry about that. <laughs> Fought you on the porch light. While we wait for that, Chris Kelly said, um, good point, Beth, very difficult to date sponges. Their stalks are really glued together long so you can't really see any rings. Yep, no rings, not a lot of carbon, so you can't do carbon dating. They're just made of silica. Nice bottle brushes and paragorgia up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bottle brush there. Also some black corals like this one. There was a comment about wanting to get a partial zoom on a yellow fan. I'm not sure when we last saw that, so we'll just look around for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. We still got a little tiny bit more summit if I had about 030 yep. zero from here. There's a I think chunky I have sea star Whoa. right there. I think I have enough scope. Star. We can get there without a move. But Yeah, I was wondering if we could do that, if we could just kind of swing around like a pendulum up here. Yeah. There's not much. When I say summit, I mean a micro yeah. lump, maybe a meter yeah. higher. Anyway. Sometimes we'll that's out. all the difference it takes. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. We see that all the time with stuff crawling on other stuff just to get a little bit more in the water column. We've got some really chunky <laughs> sea stars over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's smell the roses a bit. OK. Why don't we zoom in on the sea stars, please? Can we get the lasers off? Can lasers them off, coming please? off. Yeah. Oh, overshot. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they're like going to town on these bamboo corals. Oh. These are really great shots. Yeah. Hopefully really those shot. stills come out. Yeah. You can see the route it took to get up there by where it's yeah. there. <laughs> well, there's a little one down below. See yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Oh. Huh. <laughs> they're Not a very everywhere. large appetite there. <laughs> do they just crawl up these stalks? Yeah, Is that they how do. They get up? Yeah. I love how they're slow. just like wrapped around it. It's so interesting. That stock looks so small Thank to you. support that big sea star. <laughs> no kidding. It's stronger than you think. Yeah, yeah <laughs> seriously. Do a quick look right here. We have a strong left cross current, crosswind, is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> Red, Red did use the word windy. He did. Yeah. Well, there's two little lumps. This is the probably the tallest one here, and there's another one over to the left. But wow, look at the size of that hold fast. <laughs> that thing is holding. Pretty impressive. Got a hold um, on. We have two Niskins left. That's so correct, we have yep. two Niskins left. I'm wondering if we want to fire one down here while we're in all these corals, and then we'll get one off bottom as our background. Sure, you want yeah. me to stop right here? Sure, that sounds okay. good. Okay. That is going to be Niskin 5. Okay, craft arm view, please. And let's make sure to get a still while we're getting ready for this Niskin just so that Meredith can see what, what we're looking at. Yep. Two and a half meters off bottom is all right? I think so. Five, looks green to me. Okay. There we go. There we go. You got it. Yeah, there we go. And it's fired. As in, it did a great job. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got porch light. You can get front porch view, please. All right. What is little crab? 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Little crab and bubble view. Oh, since we just fired a Niskin, someone's wondering what does eDNA stand for, and I'm pretty sure it's environmental DNA. Environmental DNA, yes. right. So Friday. the idea here is that uh, animals are constantly shedding cells into the environment, and those cells contain their DNA. And so by filtering the water, we're capturing some of that material and can use it as a way to get a, an assessment of the diversity of the animals in the area without having to actually collect an individual specimen. Yep. And can it come from things like mucus or gametes or anything really? Uh, anything in the water mm -hmm. that's got <laughs> DNA that gets captured on the filter could potentially contribute its DNA to the analysis. Oh, it's called a Niskin bottle. Someone's wondering. Um, it's a sort of a, I don't know, it's um, attached to the side of Hercules, and it allows us to capture water samples for eDNA, uh, Niskin. Somebody's wondering, uh, is it N-I-S-K-I-N, Niskin? Correct. Yeah. Can we get a partial zoom on this, if possible? Yeah, I'll see what I can do. That little tiny. Um, yeah, so the Niskin bottles are basically uh, a glorified PVC tube with <laughs> caps on both ends, mm -hmm. and it goes down with the caps open. And then when in, we want to collect a water sample, we pull on a lanyard that's holding the caps open, and then it releases those caps, which are pulled together with a spring. <laughs> Thank you. Nice All right. bottle brushes there, too, mm -hmm. while we're looking. It's a pretty shot. Yeah, go ahead, Nav. That was indeed 062, and thanks for that waypoint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, so if we see another rock, we might try to pick it up. We might not have a lot of time. Fighting, fighting uh, to make it left past that three, four, five. That's funny. Degree. Yeah. Well, I guess that's all the, the last Atalanta view we'll have. <laughs> For a minute. It's funny. Just doesn't quite have enough jam. What's the motor page say? What does the motor page say? 152 yeah. volts, 0.3 amps. Neat. Now I'm heading down slope. Yeah, a nice look back to the northwest. Mm -hmm where we were diving a few days ago. I can kind of see the seam out of it, I my eyes. Is Niskin an acronym or is it a person's name? It's a person's last name who helped develop the bottle. Shale Niskin, 1966. You say you wanted to do a Niskin once we're more than 10 meters off bottom, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's for the background eDNA, okay. the control, if you will. Roger that. Uh, you want to be looking left. You want to be looking 315. Yeah, if you can't get there, I might be pulling you too much with the current. It's me, whatever. It's coming around, it looks like, maybe.
you want to tip, tip way down. Can we get a partial zoom on this shiny rock right there? Shiny rock. Sure. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Kind of far away. Mm. Looks attached. Probably can't pick yeah. it up. Okay, it's thank you. It's stuck. Thanks. The tiny little cut coral over there. There oh, we go. Really Just coming into the corner of your view now. No, you want to be looking left. You see it in Rob Nav where I am versus you. And you can see the light from my lights coming in your view. Sorry about that Atalanta view. Only so much I can do with one thruster in this current. There you are. I mean, the real question here is if we're going to get our Chana cops before we. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say not likely. <laughs> if we're going to do that Niskin, likely. maybe it might be time to come off bottom now and then okay. come up a little bit, do a Niskin, and then start our ascent. That sounds reasonable to me. All right. All right. So that is going to be our final Niskin, Niskin 6. All right, you can uh, match the heading of the ship, All please. Right. Matching the ship. How much, uh, we want to be 10 meters off bottom, is that the goal, Diane? 10 to 15, I think, is the sort of the gold standard. And craft arm view, please. Okay. Let's see what kind of animals <laughs> the eDNA might get. Maybe not a whale. <laughs> Maybe crab. 10.0 meters is okay? Yes. 9.8? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. 10.2 meters. How long does eDNA stay in the water, or DNA stay in, stay in the water before it degrades? I don't know the answer to that question. I mm, think it question. depends on the okay. species. You can kill. I, I'll kill the source sleep. of the eDNA. Okay. And let's go off bottom. Quick explanation, some folks are sort of wondering about how things work in the control van when we're all sort of talking to each other and around each other it can get hectic sometimes when we're doing a lot of things. So usually in the control van, operational commentary is, is sort of priority. So when Lynette is talking to the bridge, making sure our positioning is correct because it's kind of hard for us to do the sampling and the exploring if we're not where we need to be. So that's usually uh, primary. And then after that, usually if Beth is talking to front row pilots about what needs to be sampled and if you know we need to go this way or that way. Uh, that's really important because that's important to our, our objectives. And then sort of in between, we get to questions and sort of expanding on any other science commentary. And then uh, usually on times like Blue Water, we can get a little bit more personal and get some chatter. So we, uh, yeah, that's how we sort of work around. Mm 
है Do baby form sea creatures ever show up in the eDNA samples? Um, I don't think it's unlikely. Larval forms of animals can be super, super small. So yeah, they might get uh, captured. Not unlikely. And if you're just tuning in and you're wondering where we are and why you don't see any corals, anything, we are just coming off bottom and starting to ascend with the ROVs. Um, so yeah. Um, according to what I'm looking at, it says 119 minutes, but I'll let front row <laughs> I'll let front row comment on that some more. <laughs> but that's what it says here on Herx. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. About 18, 19 meters a minute going up. Ooh, what's that drifting? So the key thing with this is not to get tunnel vision. It's very, very, very hard to not get tunnel vision. <laughs> I can see that. Tunnel vision doing what, Trevor? Using the manipulator. Okay. We're having an opportunity now to do some manipulator training. Oh, great. Ooh, hello, porch light. Boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. What time do you want to do protocol? Okay. Okay, so let's start with that. Yeah. So that is four joints. Start out four out of seven. So All right. you're left-handed, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Should um, I take the stool or should I sit here? Whatever you think. I, think um, I don't know that you have enough to get it on your lap. You might, but might be able to just. But this is the time to to try out uh, what like get comfortable holding it. Get in a good spot for it. Okay. So it's we all need to move the up, right? can move the winch controller. It oh, is locked. Yeah. yeah. So there is a halt button that if oh, you bump that, wait, some of its done. some of the uh, joints will move, but okay. you can't hit anything I'll with them. I'll type it in. Maybe you could. Here, Shelby, so you can see. Anyway, don't try to hit stuff. Okay. I'll try not to hit stuff specifically. Trevor, I've got to go uh, reset the starboard deck camera downstairs. you mind if I run out of the van and do that now? Yeah, Roger. Go ahead. So some people like it pointed up so you can see the buttons. Yeah. So I can show you the two hand positions real quick. Okay. So first off, this joint doesn't do anything. So just oh. grab it at a place that that won't move. Okay. It's a, just a loose thing to allow you different grips. Um, so just don't try not to force up or down too much on this. You don't want to move that too often. Okay. So if you're going to hold it buttons up, you want a hand in here kind of holding onto this. So one hand does this, and you can also push up and down with the, this finger. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So this hand does these two joints, which are isolated right now. Okay. This hand does everything else. All right. So one hand kind of, uh, I mean, feel what works for you. I'm just telling you a starting point, but. Yeah. And I, you can feel this hand does both this pivot point and this pivot point and this hand moves everything else yeah and you want to make sure if you're doing it that way up you want your thumb up in this zone because you're going to be pushing those buttons all the time okay and this trigger this here. trigger or this trigger thumb or forefinger either that's one is fine jaws that's jaws yep okay kind of got a feel for it i think so okay so when you're doing movements on there slow is smooth and smooth is fast so try to keep your movements uh, as slow as you can. Okay. Um, so to unhalt, it's the topmost button. You see the green light is on, that means you're halted. Okay. As soon as you unhalt, Ooh. the jaws open up. So you can try closing the jaws now. Jaws. And you can try moving those wrist joints. So that, that one doesn't do anything. That one doesn't do anything. I mean, it, it does, but for right now, we'll say it does not. What do we call this one? That one is wrist yaw. Wrist yaw. Also wrist left, right. Okay. And we have wrist. That's wrist pitch. Pitch. Or wrist okay. up and down. And it's default to open right now. Yes, it will always default to open. Okay. The so only way you can... Like lock uh, in that grip you have to lock in the grip the only way to get it to stay closed is you close it and then also press the grip lock button oh okay this is why i don't like this this configuration, this configuration. i see that now but i uh, you should definitely try both okay the other one is this well i guess i could yep, do it like a right hander that's just right handed the other way i can show you uh-huh well, but always halt it before you let it go Always okay. halt before you pass or move away. Okay. Okay. Arm is yours. Okay, and good. Nice check. <laughs> so the other way I do is I put my thumb underneath. Oh, let me check my delta. Yeah, really I fast. slowed it down already. Oh, thank you. Um, okay. The other way is thumb underneath. Uh huh. And then you can use your middle finger on the, all these buttons and your pointer finger on this. I do not use the bottom one. Okay. So you do all this. You can't see the lights, but I can do halt with this middle finger. And when you get to doing all these buttons later, that's fine. Okay. This is also your, your jaw rotate. Kind of holding it like a pencil. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I use this finger here and this one there. So obviously you'd be the other way, but. Okay. So again, make sure you're comfortable with the, with the controller before you get too invested in it. Make sure you're in a, in a way that makes sense for you. That one doesn't do anything. That's correct, yeah. It's just that. Okay. So it's also a difference in hand size, too. I can't speak for different hand sizes. Okay. I think I, yeah, I kind of want to try this one now. Okay. So I'll unhalt. Yep. Oh. Now you've grip locked, great. Okay.
So you're tending towards this one? I kind of feel like I should just operate it like a right-hander. <laughs> I'm yeah. not sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's mirror image. The only difference is that it's on the right side of this box. Everything else is identical. But then I could use my thumb up here. Hey, you could do that either way. Oh. Oh yeah, I have thumbs on both hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a morning person, eh? <laughs> oh yeah, I have thumbs on both hands. <laughs> Good intel right there. All right. Little shout out to Lynette up there. Um, great job with the navigation mm -hmm. on that quick survey and then all the waypoints for the samples. Awesome. Ah, thank you. And adjusting for as the current change and still putting the vehicles on target. Nice job. Thank you. Agree with that shout out. Someone said, why such a short dive? But this was actually 16 hours, right? Technically? 14. 14. So when we only had about... Oh, yeah, because uh, we were delayed. That's 10 right. hours bottom time. Yeah, we, we had a weather delay. That's right. It was right. weather. Yes. And then, yeah. So try to keep it in the same grip all the time. Right now your thumb's not on there. You want to try and uh. be in one place all the time, and you don't want to move your hands okay. mid mid movement that makes sense yeah, i want to be able to use all the functions at any time at some wrist point up. at some point you will use all seven functions at once like you move in and you want something to stay upright a push core yeah if you turn it on its side it all gets messed up so you have to like do a, j a wrist rotate as you do a wrist pitch and yaw kind of thing and do these compound movements and you want to have to be in a the point I'm getting at is get practice now at a point where you can grow into that. Place where you have control over all of it at once. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I think I like this grip the best. Okay. If you want to try bringing it onto your lap, that'd be fine too. You got enough scope with this thing, Ooh, I think. Oh, if I can, that'd be awesome. Okay, make sure it's halted before you put it down. That's the probably the most important rule. And then it can fit into that little, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. I also recommend using your armrest as much as possible, which is going to be tough for you because it's the crossway, but if you can get it Maybe I can in a way that... Use the table. The table is also good, yeah. It's really good practice learning in the co-pilot chair because then when you get into this chair and you use it, you're like, oh, the armrests are just stable and it's easy. That's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. And halting. Beth, you want to quickly talk about the next dive? Some folks are just wondering timing. Sure. Uh, yeah, so this dive will be on deck within the next two-ish hours, 8 a.m.